now let us see how we can stop and start jenkins we can use multiple ways but as of now i'm showing only two the first one is to stop jenkins from command prompt to st stop jenkins from command prompt we use service jenkins stop let us see that okay this is my jenkins server and this is my jenkins dashboard so currently it is working it's up and running okay now what we will do we will execute this command the command is service jenkins stop so come here just saying service jenkins stop service jenkins stop okay stopping now let us see see it got stop now now my jenkins is not running okay to start the same service jenkins start okay service jenkins start okay starting okay refresh see again it got start okay. we got it right this how we used to stop and start okay from command prompt now we will see how we can do from the url in the url we can't give stop okay we have to give exit okay let us see this after this put forward slash after forward slash what we need to give we need to give exit okay e x i t this is to stop okay okay retry with post shutting down okay this how we used to stop the jenkins from url thank you now let us see how we can restart the jenkins from command prompt we use the similar command like service jenkins restart i'm just coming here this is my command prompt service jenkins restart okay see currently uh, it is in running state i'm just refreshing this okay we will do this I'm sorry i have given the wrong name service jenkins restart okay restarting i'm just refresh this okay this how we can do from command prompt and from jenkins url also we can able to do that how we can do jenkins url slash restart just log in okay after this slash or i think i will yeah this is the one restart it will ask for it will prompt to give the permission are you sure you want to restart jenkins yes i want so it is restarting okay this how we will do the restart as of now we saw how to stop and restart from both ways command prompt as well as the jenkins url thank you hello welcome back in the last two classes we have been seen how to stop and start jenkins how to restart the jenkins in both ways from command prompt as well as the jenkins url okay it's simple right but few things we need to remember while we are doing the restart or stop and start that we will discuss this class and next class or next coming two to three classes and very important to know okay the question is while we are doing stop start and restart from browser from browser if you are doing these three then what will happen to the running builds see definitely right whenever you want to run restart or whenever you want to do the restart or stop and start the build definitely few builds will be there in the running state for stopped builds or the builds which are not executing 
will not have any problem but the bills are running at that time i am doing the restart then what will happen to the running bills here we are doing the restart stop and start from the browser in this scenario what will happen to the running bills we will see in the in this class what jenkins will do jenkins will stop all the running bills no issues if you give a restart jenkins will get restart but if the bills are running it will stop and this bill numbers will be aborted status correct right if the bill got success then it will be in the green if failure it will be in the red correct right in the same way if we do any if we do the restart or stop and start from browser when the bills are running then the bill state the status of that bill is aborted here this while running the second bill we restarted or stop and started okay once the we restarted done the bill status will be as like this okay we will see that okay uh, what i will do i will create a new job that is called sleep okay it's already there i think sleep job because i will use the sleep command here okay now come to build steps and build step execute shell the command is sleep sleep uh, i will do first 5 seconds okay build now it will take it will run for 5 seconds right yeah completed very good now what i will do i will uh, sleep for 30 seconds so that in between we will do the restart so okay that is done save build now okay it is running so meanwhile what we will do we will restart this restart from here restart okay yes i want to restart my restart is done so sign in this is the job right if you see it is in terminated state sir it is in aborted state if you run again again it will if it is completed again it will be in the green color okay it will take 30 seconds right so we will wait okay so now my yeah if you see now the third bill got completed again it came into the green color so the answer for this is if you start from browser it will be the terminated state next we will see what if if we do the restart from command prompt that is very important okay thank you in the previous class we saw what will be the bill status if it is running and we do the restart now the same question what will be the status of running jobs if we do stop start and restart from command prompt whether it will be the same or it will be the different we will see that okay jenkins will stop the running bills yes same at the browser also same here also same and these bill numbers will not be there in the bill history got it right these bill numbers means if it is running at the two second bill is running and i did the restart from command prompt after that that second bill number will not be there in the history example if you see here first bill got completed while running the second bill i did the restart from command prompt so because of that it is not there because of that second is not there after complete it will come as it is that what we said while running the build number 2 we have restarted so it is not there in the build history okay but we can see the number means 
the second number we can see in the jobs folder you see this is the my folder here i can able to see but here i am not able to see okay we will see how it will be okay we will use the same sleep job uh, i will do once again so fourth is in progress what i will do i will restart this okay restart done now come here my restart is completed i'm just signing in where is four at the time of four only we started the restart right what what happened to that that what we said it won't be there if you run the next job four will come or five five will come definitely five will come okay let's see five after three what it is it is five okay i just press twice uh, twice so it is six so where is four four will not be there okay but as i said it will be there in the back end now let us see whether 2 is there or not what is the path cd 4 i'll just copy this var lib cd okay var lib cd var lib jobs after this what is our job name sleep job so cd sleep job okay here enter into the builds b u i l d s builds see here it is there see here it is there but here sorry fourth right third fourth okay yeah see here fourth is there fourth build number is there all the build numbers will come here since sixth right so sixth build number so six but what happened to four it is not there okay got it right when we do uh, restart from command prompt and if any build number is running then those build number will not be there we won't see in the build history in the next class we will see why we can't able to see those build numbers in the next class we will discuss that thank you hello welcome back in the previous class we saw if we do restart from command prompt if any build is running then that build number we can't able to see in the build history in the back end we can able to see but in the build history means in the front end in the job we can't able to see now we will see why we can't able to see those build numbers that were running when we do stop and stop from the command prompt because those builds means whenever whatever whichever the build is in progress we restarted right that build number status will not be updated correctly in the back end the status will not be updated correctly in the back end because of that we won't see in the jenkins page example if the build completes normally if any build completes like uh, this one see all this file so if normally these builds are completed whether success or failure or aborted whatever the case what will be the status in the back end it will be in this state like success if you see here the success or finished aborted or finished failure will come like all this like if you see finished finished success finished finished all this like whatever the state it is it is updating as finished but for builds which got stopped means which whatever it got stopped while doing the restart from command prompt the status will be like this terminated 
the finished state will not be there the finished state will not be there for this because of this we can't able to see since there is no finished state normally if success or failure finished should be there see here finished is there right that will not be there in the such bills that will not be there in the bills which got uh, which are in progress and we did restart from command prompt okay let us see that if you are still any confused just please uh, let me know i will explain okay here four is not there let us see what will inside the four okay the same right sleep job and sleep job yeah perfect now we will enter into the any build okay cd1 okay we will see the cat cat log i'm just seeing the log message if you see here finish it success right this means first job is successed okay cd sorry cd2 cat log okay this called finished aborted correct right that what second got aborted good three also success now we will go into the fourth bill cd 4 okay here the same we will enter into the we will see the cat message cat log see here there is no status there is no status because of this because of status was not there okay like i mean finished is not there because of this we can't able to see okay now you come to know right why it is not there thank you now let us see this question few bills few bill numbers are missed in the bill history what would have happened see some some may ask this question or even i personally feel like this when i open some jenkins job right suddenly few bill numbers will not be there it will 1 2 3 will be there 4 5 will not be there again 6 7 again 8 will not be there like that it will happen so we need to understand why in what cases that bill numbers got missed even if any the team dev team will ask right at the time you should be ready to answer this the possible ways are while running the bill jenkins might be restarted or stopped we just saw right if you run restart in uh, from command prompt if any bills are running then that history will not be there we already saw in practical in that case bill number will not be there manually that bill number might be deleted see if you entered and you manually got deleted that bill number and bill discord option might be set okay bill discord option might be set okay in this case means see you may got the question right see bill discord how it will work it will clean all the matched bill numbers it won't delete one two keep three delete not like that right then how come this answer is correct yes whatever you are you are thinking is correct but assume that one two i mark the bills as keep this bills forever means bill discord will not be deleted 1 and 2 what it will delete it will delete the rest correct right assume my bill numbers are 10 i kept like uh, what to say i kept uh, bill discord uh, maximum number is 5 but 1 and 2 i mark it as like keep this bill forever so it won't delete again 3 4 it will delete again 5 i said keep this bill forever so what the bill discord will do it will keep 1 2 it will delete 3 4 and again it will keep 5 correct right after 11 again it will delete 6 so in this case the bill number will be missed you got it right in this three scenario there might be the other but major these three are the cases if you didn't see the bill numbers in the bill history thank you
now let us see about safe restart what is this option will do and we will see the difference between restart and safe restart what restart will do restart will restart the jenkins immediately it will restart even though if any jobs are running okay correct right restart will restart if any jobs are running even though restart will do but what safe restart will do safe restart will not restart immediately what it will do it will wait it will wait until the jobs completes okay will restart only if the current build execution completes it won't start see if you give the restart right it won't check anything correct but here in safe restart it is not like that if you even though if you give safe restart if any builds are running it won't restart until it the uh, what to say uh, builds completes uh, until the running builds completes it won't do the restart and the question comes okay then what will happen see current jobs are running okay jenkins will wait assume that in between means a job is running in between b got started then what jenkins will do again it will wait on up to the b completes now it will then in that case it will keep on going like a completes in between b started b completes in between c started like it will go right it will go every time every time one or two builds will keep on running in that case our restart will uh, will not start at any time it will wait forever so for this jenkins will not take the new builds see a job is in progress if anyone started the b it won't take it won't take it will say i am restarting just wait even automatic bills like auto schedule bills also will not trigger that what it means no new bills manually and automatically will trigger means no new bills will trigger until the restart completes until and unless the restart completes there will not be any build okay all the jenkins like whatever the manual trigger or schedule builds all it will keep in the queue when restart completes jenkins will start jenkins will start the jobs from url how we can give we can give this way okay this is our job right let us see we will pick this one yes build 2 is in still progress i mean build 7 is in still progress okay restart completed i'm just logging this job right so 7 is terminated okay good again i'm doing the re build now now what i will do i will do save I will give in this way. This is wrong, guys. Safe restart is wrong. Okay. What we need to give? We need to give here capital R. This is the correct syntax. I will give that. Yes. See, Jenkins is going to shut down. It won't start. It won't start at all. If parallelly, if I want to start this will quickly, will start. Okay. In between, it got restarted. Okay. Again, we will see. Like, again, we will do restart. Parallelly, we will start another job. Restart completed. Okay. See, it got success, right? What I will do, right? I will do all at a time. Okay. I have three tabs. So the first tab. I will ready for build. Second time, this command ready. Save. We'll keep this command ready. And here, okay. Now what I will do? I will make this build. See, nine is in progress. 
what i will do i will say restart yes and i am running this job see it won't take trigger it is saying pending for what jenkins is about to shut down so jenkins is about to shut down so i can't make a build okay you got it right we can't trigger manual builds and automatic builds also will not trigger where it will be it will keep in the queue okay builds will be in queue once done once restart done the third number right what if whatever it's in queue it will start immediately jenkins is smart enough okay see the build is in progress we, we when we give we give before restart when it is started after restart you got it right what is the major difference between safe restart and restart mostly we use safe restart guys mostly okay because i don't want to stop my builds in between okay thank you in some cases we will configure jenkins in a such a way that the build should fail if build is taking more time then it should fail we will see why we will do that sometimes right due to network issue or some other build issue what will happen build will get stuck means it will keep on running it won't complete and it won't fail with that what will happen the build is keep on running then other builds of this job will be in the queue means if this job whatever the job got struck if it is completes whether it is a success or failure then only the other jobs sorry then only the other builds of this job will run if this is not at all completed then how come the other jobs will run correct right so in that case if build are taking long time than expected then we will fail the build okay what is the buffer time we used to keep like uh, we will keep in such a way that 25 to 50% means my average time my average time to complete a build is 1 hour so the buffer time will be 30 minutes means i will keep 1 and 1/2 hour if it is taking more than 1 and 1/2 hour then jenkins will make the build fail i can't go see i have some hundreds of jobs and thousands of builds i can't go each and every build and check okay this average time is 1 hour and it is running 1 and 1/2 hour so i can i need to fail this manually i can't do definitely automation should be there for this what we use we use build timeout plugin by default this will not be there okay it will come only with when we download build timeout plugin okay where it will be it will be inside this is a job specific right definitely it will be inside the job okay in job configuration build section we will see whether by default it will be there or not okay any job you can take okay configure here where it will be build section okay inside the build steps here add build step add build step okay which i need to choose run with timeout do we have that option run with timeout no because by default it won't come it will come when we install build timeout plugin so first we will install that how to install this one manage jenkins next plugins here which plugin i need to choose uh, go for available plugins which plugin build timeout the plugin is build timeout this is the plugin okay we will be back once this restart come so restart is done i'm just entering my credentials 
Okay. So CICD configure here build section add build step before that only three was there right we will see see we got the new one yes select this one we will see what is the difference between absolute and deadline okay so we will check this first we will see absolute here we need to give time okay the time would be uh, one minute or two minutes three minutes based on the minutes we need to give okay first i will give one minute let us see what will happen execute a uh, we will see shell command okay i'm just giving sleep so i have given sleep and my build should complete in a minute so in a minute it should be 60 seconds so i will give 70 so the build should fail right because what i'm saying i'm saying uh, it should complete in a minute if not if it is extended more than a minute then it should fail but what i am giving here i am giving 70 seconds means definitely this build will run more than a minute according to us this should get fail correct okay apply yes i can save directly build now we will see there is no first build right okay let us see whether this build will success or failure build got completed after 70 seconds but what is this it got success but according to my you know description it should fail right then why it got success because if you see here the minimum should be three minutes okay the minimum minimum time we need to give us three minutes before that if you give one minute or two minute it won't consider okay minimum three minutes we need to give if it is extend then that then only the build will get fail okay good let us see whether that will work or not okay here i'm giving three three means 180 so i'm just giving 190 let us see whether this will success or failure build now let us check the build number just see it ran on it started on july 7 2019 at uh, 219 okay okay we will be back we will be back once this got complete the build is keep on running it started almost two minutes 59 seconds ago let us see whether it got fail or what see aborted because it's taking more than that time we are saying build timeout after three minutes mark as a abode that what we configured so it is taken more than three minutes that's why it is causing this okay so we can mention the timeout actions means what i need to do if it is extending more than uh, whatever the specified time what i need to do by default is about i can i can uh, you know you can fail the build like i can write the description as well okay this how we can use that and we have another option this is absolute the another option is deadline here deadline means we need to give the time okay deadline means we need to give the time means it should complete by this time means by uh, midnight 12 it has to complete if it is not completing by midnight then it should get fail okay this specified this one mostly we won't use deadline we used to use absolute but deadline also we can use Okay, this is how we can use this configuration. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Now, let us see how to queue or block or hold whatever we call it as current build until other running job completes their execution. Means, if I start a build and if some other jobs, if some other jobs are running, 
then my current job should not start it has to hold or it has to be in queue up to when it should be in queue until the other jobs get complete example assume that i started a qa build qa build should not complete until and unless dev build completes got it right if i start qa build definitely it should not complete until and unless dev build got completes okay for that we will use this one for this what we'll use we use build blocker plugin by default it won't come and is this is different from upstream and downstream okay don't think like this is same as upstream this is different okay and this won't come by default we need to install a plugin what it will do it will uh, with this we can make the build in queue until other jobs completes its execution that what we discussed right okay where this option will be and what is that option the option will be block build if certain jobs are running what is the option it's a job configuration option and the option is block build if certain jobs are running okay we will see that our jenkins i'm just logging okay uh, do i have yeah i'll just see this qa build it's a plain build i think it's a plain build great okay what is that option block build right we will see whether that option is there block see that option is not there even i'm searching with a single word it is not there so how we can make it available we can make it via this manage jenkins now we are installing that plugin okay manage plugins available what is the plugin build blocker okay the same one right build blocker plugin okay so i'm just searching build blocker this is the one restart then i'm just entering here before that option was not there right now let us see whether it is there or not i'm just entering into the qa build configure now we will search for block because with the same name we search it here right block is not the same word see now we got that option now we have that one okay what i will do i will give the dev build what is the dev build okay we have do we have any build with the dev yeah we have uh, let us see this configuration build okay now if we start this it will complete within a second right so what i will do i will make this to run at least 30 seconds okay so now now my uh, this build will run at least 30 seconds apply. now i will give the same name the project name is dev build so what my project name is dev build okay now we will uh, save this first i will what i will do i will run this one okay build now 39 is in progress parallelly we will start this let us see what will happen see it is pending means it is depending upon this once this got completed means once this got completed automatically what will happen this build will execute we given only 15 seconds right it will come in short it will complete in short time completed let us see whether this will do see this got completed now got it right in this way we can hold if other jobs are running okay very good 
okay we can use regular expression also now the another question see if before starting qa dev is already running got it right before starting qa dev build is already running what if if i start qa build and dev build is not running got my point i am starting qa at that time if dev is running my qa build will wait if i start qa and my dev build is not running then what will happen we will see now see dev is not running we are sure right dev build is not running okay i am starting this one see it got complete it not waited for that why because it will hold if the job is running if that if that job is running then only this will wait if job is not running then what is the problem for this it will directly execute got it right thank you hello hello hi welcome back now let us discuss about what is the use of upstream and downstream jobs the main use is whenever your job depends upon another job or whenever your project depends upon another project in that case we go for upstream and downstream there are different ways we can configure this one of the option is build after other projects are built so it clearly says that execute a job execute a current job you can say when when other projects are built example this is my current job the job name is xyz this build has to trigger when other project here other project is assume that abc so i am saying execute this job when this job completes here the dependent job means abc will become as upstream the current job will become downstream okay here abc like where i mean i mean xyz xyz will become downstream and abc will become upstream okay so whenever abc completes whenever upstream job completes automatically it will start downstream whenever upstream complete automatically it will start downstream but but whenever downstream triggers whenever downstream triggers then it won't start upstream okay whenever downstream will triggers it won't trigger upstream but whenever upstream triggers on completion it will automatically triggers downstream the same we are explaining here whenever upstream upstream will completes then downstream will trigger automatically but whenever downstream will triggers then upstream build will not trigger okay you got it right yeah now where i need to give this option we we can give anywhere but but in which job we choose this option that job becomes downstream you got it right wherever we choose this option that job becomes downstream okay now we will see we will create two jobs okay and in which job, which job we choose this option we, we will choose in xyz the same it is here right wherever we choose this option wherever if you choose this option in abc then abc will become downstream okay if if you choose in xyz then xyz will become as a downstream we will see we will see the same okay come to here come to new item the job i am creating is abc okay i can create downstream also first it's not it's not no rule that i need to create upstream first and downstream first we can create it we, the order is doesn't matter okay now i created abc now i am creating xyz xyz okay it's also free step okay go to here see do, do i am seeing any option like upstream or downstream option no similarly we will open the other project the other project is abc 
here in abc do we seeing any option called upstream and downstream no we are not seeing any way okay now the same like it we are saying now where we need to choose this option we can choose in anywhere but when which job we choose that job becomes downstream so i'm choosing xyz so xyz configure the option will be there in build triggers okay the option is build after other projects are built select this which job i need to trigger first a b c okay this job has to trigger okay see where i am choosing this option in x y z okay save this okay i'm just refresh this if you see what are the upstream projects for this what are the upstream project for x y z a b c and for abc what are the downstream project xyz if you come to abc then downstream project should be should be xyz i'm just refreshing this see got it right here upstream is abc and here downstream is xyz you can go directly here okay see okay now now there is no build number in abc correct there is no build number and even there is no build number in xyz what i will do i will trigger this according to us if i trigger downstream upstream build should not be triggered if i trigger downstream then upstream should not be triggered yes now i am triggering xyz okay it's a simple one it will complete very soon okay now the build number is 1 we will come here correct right whatever we said is correct we triggered downstream but upstream build will not trigger okay so just remember the build number is 1 just refreshing again so the xyz build number is 1 <clears throat> now we are triggering upstream we are triggering upstream means we are triggering this so automatically it has to trigger downstream we will come we will see whether this is complete triggers or not so abc we triggered so upstream job we triggered whether it triggered downstream yes you see we triggered upstream downstream it triggered automatically okay how this build got triggered if you see here how this build got triggered start up by upstream this build is started by upstream okay what is the upstream job name it's an abc okay if you go to the console output for build number 1 build number 1 we started manually correct so it is saying started by whom kartik but here it is saying that it is started by upstream project now you got it right yes next class we will discuss some other option now let us see what are the other option that is available to define upstream and downstream projects in the previous session what option we saw we saw build after other projects are built where we use this option wherever we use this option that job becomes downstream we have one more option called build other projects but wherever we use this project it will become upstream wherever we use this pro this option then that job becomes downstream wherever we use this option that job becomes upstream okay now assume that we have two jobs same two jobs one is xyz and one is abc where we need to set this option we are planning to set up in xyz then this become upstream and what is the other job it will become downstream whenever we trigger upstream job then only after completion of this downstream job will trigger but whenever we trigger downstream then upstream will not trigger okay we will see in practical so we have two plain jobs abc and xyz so where we are setting this option we are setting build other project option in xyz job we will see whether it will become upstream or downstream 
so go to configure and this option we will see in post build actions go to that post build actions and build other projects what project i need to build i need to build abc okay abc job will execute only if my xyz build got success you got it right if my build got success then only abc will run assume that i need abc in all cases means i need abc job has to trigger even my xyz build is failed then i can choose this option okay yeah i'm just saving this here we are not seeing any upstream or downstream just refresh this we got downstream job go to that abc have upstream so clear right here the upstream is xyz because we have chosen that option in xyz and downstream is abc okay now this is xyz i'm opening this in new tab okay just remember upstream is 7 and downstream is 15 so according to us if we trigger upstream after completion then downstream has to trigger now let us see i am triggering upstream okay it got completed now see whether 16 is triggering or not yeah if you see it triggered automatically we didn't trigger anything even that information we can see in the console output see started by what upstream this job is started by upstream and the build number eight so with this we can say whenever we started upstream downstream also get started now we will run downstream okay let us see whether upstream is triggered or not before it was eight I am refreshing the page now also it is 8 means we got it right if we trigger upstream downstream will trigger automatically but if we trigger downstream then upstream build will not trigger automatically our next question is how to delete a job and what will happen if you delete since we deleted a job so there won't be any activities from that job because the job itself is not there so no more activities what are the activities like we can't run the job automatic builds will not be triggered and the important thing assume that i have two jobs upstream and downstream job whenever i run upstream automatically downstream job will run because i given downstream job name in upstream but i deleted downstream do i need to go again in upstream and do i need to edit no that is not required if we delete downstream job automatically that changes will update in upstream so if you delete any job do no need to go and edit in upstream jobs okay and the final one is we can't get the job again i mean whatever the job we deleted we can't get it back okay we will go and we will see the same in our jenkins dashboard I have a job name called downstream okay and the upstream job for this is this one okay if you remember if you see here we have one job here and one here I'm just refreshing it still it is one and still it is one okay now I'm running this since this is upstream so after completion downstream will also trigger correct now if you see here we have with green icon downstream now what i am doing i am deleting this okay where is the option delete project it will pop up yes okay the job is deleted since that downstream job is deleted since that job is deleted so no more manual builds no more automatic builds but what about the upstream since we given this name in upstream come here it is there now if i refresh that job is gone did we do any configuration change here 
no it is updated automatically okay so whenever we delete no need to bother about editing in the upstream jobs thank you what we saw in the previous question we saw what will happen if we delete a job but now i have a job currently i am not using that but in future i may use that so in that case i can't go for delete option because once i delete i can't get that job again here my scenario is different currently that job is not required but in future maybe after a month or a week again i need that job in that case i can't go for the deletion because once i delete again i need to create from scratch so in this case what i need to do i need to disable a job so we will see what will happen if we disable a job we can't run any builds job will be there in deletion what will happen job itself is not there but here job will be there but build now option will not be there and automatic builds will not be trigger build will not trigger even if it is configured as downstream project okay the same the same what happened in deletion okay but here job will be there but it won't get trigger and after a week or month if i need it back then i can enable the job this can't do in deletion so here since we disable we can enable back once we enable all the three above actions will be performed again without any issue okay now let us see in the dashboard now we will take the same two jobs i'm just refreshing this since the we deleted the downstream in the previous session so we will create again okay go to new item given downstream let's say freeze trial okay what i will do to show the demo i will i will configure such a way that it should run every minute okay for that build periodically and five stars okay two three okay now what it will do it will run on every minute i'm just printing hi okay Okay. So based on the schedule, it will run on every minute. We will be back once the at least one job get completes. If you see this, this job is executed automatically. Even if you see the console output, it is saying that this has been started by a timer. Okay, the build is one. Meanwhile, what we will do? We will configure this as a downstream project in upstream. Okay, in upstream. See, there is no upstream as of now. Okay, go to configure, post build sections, and here I'm giving downstream. Okay, so here, okay, I'm just triggering this. We will see whether this course scheduled job or it ran by upstream. Yes, absolutely fine. This has been run by upstream. Now, what I'm doing here, we saw two examples. Like one is build periodically, it means based on the schedule it is running, and also we saw upstream and downstream. Even we can trigger this manually with the help of build now option. Okay, this also it is possible. Okay, done. Now what I'm doing, if you see here, there is an option called disable. I'm doing disable. Now I, whether I saw the, whether the uh, build now option is there? No, it won't be there. That what we discussed here. Okay, build now option will not be there. Are we seeing any build now option? No. Even though if you run the upstream, see if you run the upstream, I trigger this 
4 completed. Now see. Even though we run the upstream, it is not recurring. Even build periodically, like automation builds, that also it is not working. Got it right? Whenever we disable, it is like same as deletion. But the advantages here with the com when compared with deletion is in deletion, whenever you need that job again, then it won't come. But here, yes, whenever we enable this, whenever we enable this, it will perform as it is. Now we have build no option, we can trigger manually and also automation build all will also be there. If you wait for some time, if you wait for a few seconds, then definitely fourth build will also come. Hi, in the previous questions, we saw how to delete and how to disable a job. And if we also saw like what will happen if we delete and if we disable a job. Now, let us see one more option called rename. Like we will see how to rename a job and what will happen if we rename. Okay, there is no change in the build execution. All the current builds will run as it is. All automatic builds will trigger as it is. But if we rename in the example in the downstream, do we need to edit same config in the upstream? No. Whenever you rename a job, then automatically that rename will affect and will update in the upstream. So if you rename any job, you don't need and you don't worry to update in the upstream jobs. It will do automatically. So Jenkins is smart enough to update your jobs. We will see in the dashboard. See here, just refreshing this. This is my downstream and upstream for this is same upstream job. This is an upstream. If you see here in the configuration, in post build actions, this name is there. Okay. If you see here, I'm not touching anything. I'm not editing upstream. This is my downstream job. Now, how to rename that in the rename section? I'm just giving very short name as DS. Okay. Rename. After rename, still I have build now option. And if I schedule automatic build periodically, then definitely it will be there. Now we will see whether this name is automatically updated in upstream or not. Just refresh this. See, I just refresh. I just renamed here, but it will automatically update it here. Hello. Our next question is, hello, our next question is, for a project, can we give more than one as an upstream job? If yes, then what will happen? The answer is yes, we can give any number of upstream jobs for a project. And the downstream job will execute each and every time on completion of each upstream job. Example. Assume that we have five upstream jobs and we executed all five. Then five times the downstream job will execute. I have five upstream jobs, but I triggered only three. See, out of five, I triggered only three. Then only three times downstream job will execute. Okay, we will see in this example. We have one downstream job. Assume that it is an ABC and the build number is 1 and we have 3 upstream jobs A, B, C. First what I did, I executed A build. Now I executed A and it got success. Then what will happen? The downstream job will also trigger. And what will happen to the build number? It will increment. It will increment to 2. Now I triggered second upstream that is B and it got failed. So what will happen? The downstream job will not triggered by default. By default, if any job fails, like if any upstream job fails, then downstream job will not trigger. Can we change this? Yes, we can change. We can change in such a way that whatever the result, if the build is success or failed, 
my downstream job should trigger we can configure in that way also now third job is triggered then what will happen on success the downstream will job will always again it will trigger so what will happen it will increment the bill number we will see the same example here for this i will take test one as a downstream job okay test one is the downstream job so how many upstream jobs we have we have three so we know where we need to give the upstream job list in the build trigger option and which option we need to choose we need to choose build after other projects are built check this option and give the upstream project name list name list i am picking dev build and comma is the separator for each and every job we have multiple then we need to separate as comma and again another build i am taking as test 2 and we don't need to give comma by default it will take and one more i am taking upstream if you see here we have four options be careful on understanding this if we select this then what will happen trigger only if build is stable means if any build is not stable then only sorry if any build is stable then only execute this job execute test one job if any upstream is not uh, stable then this won't trick example if dev test and test two both are stable then this job will execute if upstream job is not stable then this test one will not execute if you select this what will happen it will execute in all cases means if it is unstable also it will trigger but if it is fail then it won't trigger okay if you select this then what will happen even though the upstream jobs are failed then also our downstream job will trigger always trigger means every time it trigger assume that we aborted or if the build is fail or if the uh, build is unstable then also my downstream job should trigger this means whatever the status of the build it will trigger here means only the build is stable means it should not be any frequent failures then only this will trigger okay i selected this by default this is the one i selected this and i am choose save okay now what are the just remember the build number it's 12 now i'm just opening this and what are the uh, upstream jobs for us dev build test 2 and upstream whichever jobs completed first the downstream job will trigger i'm just selecting build now i am executing all three at a time build now build now and build now okay now let us see what will happen see that in is is waiting for that we will refresh it again yes it is waiting let us see yes dev build got completed it should trigger see it is triggering if you see this what will it will say it is started by which job from dev build okay dev build is completed now we will see what about these two okay this upstream also completed now see it is pending because the upstream job is completed and what will it will do it will start this job but still it is in progress so it is not a trigger see once completed this is triggered So 13 and 14. Normally we triggered three builds, right? See, from 12 we triggered three builds. So 13, 14, 15. But what happened the 15th one? It is not triggered. Why? Because this job is failed. Since this job is failed, so the downstream job is not triggered. And if we change this option to here, means to build trigger. 
always trigger if the build is aborted also or trigger even if the build is failed I'm just saving this and I'm running this okay build now now what will happen it will execute the downstream project because we configured in such a way that say now 15 will also come okay yes it is fail but our job will also trigger see it is also triggered because even though if it is failed let it trigger what will happen got it right in this way we can choose multiple upstream projects thank you hello welcome back our next question is how to change the build now option we all know build now is an option which is used to trigger a build manually but somehow i don't like this name like i want alternate name like run or execute etc let us see how to change this for this i am choosing this job if you see this is the default one so what will happen if you click this it will execute a build okay but i want to rename this so how to do that we have a plugin for this so how to how to install plugins go to the manage jenkins select manage plugins here go for available if you search with build now we have this plugin the plugin name is customized build now label so just download and we will restart we will come back once this is up now the plugin got successfully installed so this is a job specific change so we need to enter into a job okay so go to this job and click on the configure now search for build now okay. if you see we have this option provide alternate label for build now select this okay I just typing run okay save this if you see the build now option gone now we have new name called run we can give any name thank you now let us see how we can integrate github with jenkins we all know what is github github is a distributed version control which is used to store the data in the form of versions like every company or every developer will use any of the version control tool what are the version control tools we have we have gate svn cvs mercurial etc like companies will use their own choice okay. to integrate with github what we need to give what we need to have we need to have github account yes i have already github account okay next create a repository yes i have already a repository this all all my repositories i use this one okay next clone the repository how to clone a repository here code section is there right click on that and select this one this is the clone url if you see here this is a clone url and if it is a linux based we can use hsh but this is a windows so i am choosing http yes i copy it next in jenkins job we need to give this git url in code source code management section okay now i will go to jenkins i will create a new job i will say git hub integration okay I'm choosing this is a freestyle. Okay. 
underscore source code management select git and give this cloned url save okay when i run the build what it should do it should clone means it will it should take all these values whatever there in the github it should take all these values and it will get stored in our jenkins job okay let us see that will happen or not before that we will see what is there in workspace is there anything in workspace no okay now we will run this after completion of the job what it has to do it has to get all these values into workspace before starting the build is there anything in workspace no now let us see once it get completes yeah it got completed now we will see what is there in the workspace see what before it was nothing right before starting the build nothing was there but now everything that is there in the github it got cloned it got into our jenkins build okay this is the process case like if you have java file then what we will do we will compile that file in our jenkins we will see the those uh, programs in the coming days but we got it right how to integrate uh, github with jenkins thank you now let us see how we can run a java program in our jenkins how we can run a java program okay first we will create a job okay new item i can say java job one or uh, i can say java program one okay well just taking a freestyle one okay now what i need to do okay create a simple java program in your local machine okay i have a java programs i already created a simple java program just hello world okay next in job configuration build add build step where i need to go in job job configuration correct where i need to go build you need to go build section okay next add build step add build step and select execute windows batch command select execute windows batch command correct okay select it now what i need to do cd path to the directory or cd path where our program is our program is in this folder so copy this path okay and cd to this okay cd okay next what i need to give i need to give java c and java program file name okay my program is the same hello world dot java so the same we need to give here that what we said right the next command what we need to give java c okay java c and hello world dot java hello double b yeah capital b only hello world dot java after that what i need to give java hello world java hello world now let us see how we can do this i just save that i think that's it yeah I just save i am i am doing a build okay completed very fast console output let us see it is got successfully executed it is compiled and it ran so hello world that what the output right hello world okay hello jenkins i can say hello jenkins let us see whether this will update or not okay i have just edited my file apart from that Jen in jenkins i am not doing anything i am just running before you saw right it print hello world now let us see whether it will print hello jenkins okay console output 
hello jenkins you got it right yes this is how we used to run java program thank you in the previous two classes we have seen how to run a java program in local machine and how to run a java program from source code but now we will see how we can create a jar file from java program so what is a jar every company whatever the uh, companies using to develop projects using java they used to create jar var or er these three they used to create from the builds okay the final goal of running a job mostly 80% is to create a jar file this, what this jar file contains it contains a compressed version of dot class files audio files image files whatever required for that project once they the jar file got uh, completed then they will deploy into the server okay so for every java project creating jar or var or er is compulsory okay so how we'll see how we can we will do that clone from git okay we use the same job why we need to do again the rework okay we already cloning from git okay now configure build execute windows batch command the same way build execute batch command the same way okay java c the same I, we are done already we are done already after this what we need to give we need to give this command means uh, i will show you that before that if you see the workspace we don't have any jar file we don't have any jar file just remember this so now what we need to give jar hyphen cf jar jar hyphen cf after this any name any jar name like uh, we can see first jar dot jar okay next the class file class file how it would be it will be with this name so copy this dot class okay this is a syntax see after completion of this it should create a jar file with this name okay save this and run it okay we will see the console output completed okay yeah it is done let us see whether jar is available or not i'm just refreshing this if you see the jar file is available okay we come to know right how to run a java code from local from uh, git repository and how to create a jar file thank you
Hello, welcome back. Now let us see how and why we need to clean or wipe out the workspace before we start cloning. Means sometimes what we will do, we will clean or we will delete all the files that are there in the workspace. Again, we do the fresh clone. Why? Because see, uh, why I need to clone? Whatever the code is there, whatever the latest code is there in the Git, repo Git repository, when I clone, it will get update. Then again, why I need to delete? Again, why I need to uh, clone freshly? Because sometimes, I won't say every time, sometimes we used to create files or folders in the build process. In the build process, we used to create few files and folders and those files and folders will not be deleted these files will be there until we clean assume that my 10th build requires few files and folders what i did i created them in the build process okay 10 and 11 it is required okay done from 12 that files are not required from 12 from 12th build that files and folders are not required but still those will be there but still those two i mean uh, files and folders will be there even though it is not required the files and folders will be there manually we can't go and we can't delete why because there are hundreds of files hundreds of files and folders will be there i can't go and i can't check okay this file is from git repository i have to keep this file is from build process i need to delete i can't do that correct right so what we will do we will ask jenkins to clean up if again if again in 28th or 30th build if i need then again i will create see i will create whenever i need but i can i can uh, but i can't do like i can create and keep whether it is useful or not useful i will i will keep it should not be like that if you want create it if you don't need then delete it okay where the option will be in the build configuration now let us see in the job like whatever we discussed right we just see in the jenkins job go to the jenkins i'm just giving local files or just clean uh, clean local files okay well, what i will do i will uh, configure git okay we will take the same because we have some good number of files here okay then git repeat dir means it will list the files that are there in the current folder so where our git clone will do in the workspace so what it will print the files that are there in the workspace dir will list all the files it is similar like ls hyphen l it will list all the files that are there in the workspace save this build now we will see the console output You will see the console output. See, these are the files that are there in the git repo. What I will do, I will create few files. Configure. See, this is a build one, build number one, right? Okay. What I am doing, I am creating two files. I can create in this way. Echo some message. I can say build number. When we create this, this changes will run in the build number 2. So I am giving the same. It's just for reference, easy reference. Okay, the file name is build number 2 dot txt. I will create one more 2.1. See, when we run this, again the list will come, right? In that list, these two files will not be there. Why? First, I am listing. So, first, I am listing the files that are there in the workspace. After that, I am creating. In this command, these two files are will not be there. 
okay after listing only i am creating these two files now again i am giving dir means in this list it will be there these two files will be there because after creation of these files in the workspace i am printing simple guys this dir will list the files that are there only in the workspace as of now means as of this command there are no local files but here what it will be there it will like git files will be there as well as local files we will see save this build and now okay build 2 got completed open this console output if you see this these are like same in the git repo whatever the files are there it will come here after that what we are doing we are creating two more files if you come here those files are there got it right those files are there my requirement got completed so i created files and also my build got completed will remove creating of these files then why two listing i'll save this build now let us see what will happen three got completed now come here see still that files are there we created in two and we deleted in three but still it is there even if you run again it will be there if you run thousand times those files will be there okay so for console output see it is there so to avoid such things we need to use this command we use this option what is the option called in build configuration build environment or we can say yeah this is a build configuration and build environment see this is the one right delete workspace before build start now i will check this save and build now okay let us see see those file got deleted if you need again then create it again create it again no issues with that see configure build here uh, just do echo hi some temp dot txt i'm just saving this okay now if i die here again level list this it will not be there because every time it is cleaning this in this it will be there next time since we are deleting again next time also it won't be here means in the first list it these files will never come simple in the first list these files will never come because every time we are deleting every time we are deleting these files it will this list it will be there we, we will see see before also it is not if before it is not there after it is there okay temp.txt if you run again again the same result again it will be in the same stage we will see the last time see again the temp.txt is not there it is come here okay thank you in the previous class we saw how to run a java program which is there in our local machine but now we will see how to run a same or similar java program which is in git repository so open git repository okay uh, this is my git repository okay okay now what i need to choose i will choose this one uh, no here uh, no java program so uh, java project yeah here we have okay just select this okay perfect it's a with a different word okay good 
I will take this Java project. Okay. So how to clone that? Click on this one. Copy this. Okay. Come to our Jenkins job. Uh, I will create a new job itself. Java from Git. Okay. Save this. Okay. What I need to do in job config source code management. In job config source code management here choose git okay and copy the url just we have taken okay and after that what we need to do we need to go for the build step i cloned here source code management means i need to get code from source code which is git that i have configured now i need to go to the build section okay. in build section what i need to choose I need to choose execute windows batch command shell also we can use if it is a linux machine but we are in windows so just click on the batch here java c program name if you observe that before we used to we need to go to the path where the program is like cd to that path but now we are not giving cd why because all this command will work in the workspace even our code will also check out into the workspace so this command execution and program is in same folder before execution will be in workspace but program is in different folder that's why we entered into the uh, folder where code is but now here no need both are in same location so no need to give cd just say java c and java c and hello world dot java after that what we need to give java hello world java hello world okay just save this now run this We will see completed very fast right see it got cloned and it got run see the same here right uh, where it is the same here the same content world d something whatever it is okay the same it came here this how we used to run java programs which are there in the source code repository thank you hello welcome back now let us see one of the important concept in the jenkins that is environment variables and it will help trust me guys this will help us a lot this definitely this will help us a lot now let us see how it will help and what it is environment variables are like global key value pair means this environment variables will available global means it will available across the jenkins how it would look like it is a key value pair example this is the key jenkins home is the key and what is the value this one means if i print this with by using certain syntax if i print jenkins home it will give this value now i don't need to remember this one right uh, like I want to know the workspace directly. I can give workspace If I want to create a file inside this one, I don't need like mkdirc colon program data Jenkins dot slash Jenkins slash some uh, Folder name no need just give Jenkins home slash folder name where it will create it will create after this means it will create after the value of uh, after the value which is there in the Jenkins home okay we can use anywhere in the build step yes we definitely it will use with this we can easily get Jenkins home so many we will get but most of the important are this like Jenkins home build number workspace location etc but we can easily we can get this assume that if there are no variables like there are no environment variables then it is very difficult for us 
because it will be very difficult for us to get that okay what we can do else we can create a file or a jar file with build number assume that my build number is 2 my job is running second build how i can get second third how i can get third how i can get that build number it is not possible right even though it may be possible by writing code but it will be huge huge difficult it will be very huge difficult to get the build number when running the job so with this we can easily within a step we can get that and we can create our file or jar file like uh, uh, assume that my jar name is dev underscore dev underscore one i can create dev underscore one underscore build number it will create very easy okay right next two to three class we will see how we can do that also this is one of the important also we can check the developer who committed the change based on that we can execute the builds this is possible we can check with one of the environment variables we can check the who committed the code and based on that we can start the builds even that is also possible and we can create our own environment variables this is also possible we will see in the next classes In the last class, we have seen what are the uses of environment variables and what are there. Now, in this class, we will see how to list or how to know how many environment variables are available. We can see the list using this one: env-wars.html after Jenkins URL. After, uh, like our Jenkins URL, we need to type env hyphen wars.html this is my jenkins url right okay here what i will do yeah this one localhost colon 8080 my port number after that what we need to give env hyphen wars see these are the available environment variables these many are there these are available in globally okay is this the only way no we have another way as well that is we can also see the list of environment variable from build using which command this command where we need to type this in the execute windows batch command if we type this then it will list the environment variables okay let us see in the build section i will say i will take qa configure what is the command set command and build and type set save build now what is the build number six i think yeah see if you see the console output see these many environment variables are there if you want to see the build number see build number he six we can easily create any jars or wars or a text file with this variable okay okay next we can also see the list from build using env but where in the linux build means if in the execute shell section we, we have to use env option okay got it right this way we can able to see the list of available environment variables thank you hello welcome back in the last class we saw what are the environment variables and how to see the environment variables like we saw from the url like env hyphen wars dot html and we redirected into the some text file now we will see how to print to print environment variables in windows batch command we use the following syntax like workspace or build number or whatever so the variable name we need to give in between percentage just remember the variable name means these names like change id change url branch name these ids we need to give in between two percentage symbols 
okay we will see that okay we will see a uh, bill number okay we will see this okay okay chin dashboard we will we will take git job as an example so click on the configure go to the build step add build step and windows batch the current echo the current build number is what we need to give in between of percentage so i have given that we will see what it will print just apply parallelly open in the another tab and give the bill now let us see what will it will print 33 console output okay see what it print the current bill number is 33 correct right this is the 33 will also give in another way okay configure can we print this one or, uh, did i miss the environment variables okay oh, shoes what i will do i will print environment variables okay i'm taking this now as an example okay well echo and the workspace is okay we will apply we will see what it will print build now okay console output see the workspace is this is the workspace correct right now we don't need to print each and every path we just use the default default feature which is provided by jenkins that is environment variables now you got it right how to see the list and how to print in the uh, you know our build now let us see how we can print in the linux machine this is my one of the linux machine click on the configure in linux machine how we can print we can print in this way dollar and two curly braces in between of two curly braces we need to give you got it right this is the syntax just copy the syntax and we will see okay i'm just copying this and i am printing here build steps okay okay i'm just printing and build number is okay. let us see what it will print build now okay build got completed just open this console output come down if you see this is the workspace correct right first we have given the workspace so direct we got the value and and the bill number is three correct right the bill number is three okay in this way we used to print the environment variables in our system in our build process thank you
let us see how we can redirect the environment variables in a text file now we saw right it is displaying in the console uh, if you remembered it is displaying in the console but instead of console i want to redirect i mean to i want to save that in a text file let us see how we can do that to redirect into a text file we use the following way in windows set we will use this greater than symbol and we will give a text file any name any name we can give in linux we use env in windows we use set in linux we use env okay let us see we, we are just seeing windows same guys just windows and linux are same configure we will see in the windows build what i need to give set after that uh, env list in environment variables list dot txt okay i'm just save build now seven will come okay console output see it got created now i want to read that and i want to know like correct right it is it is say, just saying it is done but i want to know whether it is correct or not how I, we can come to know we need to read how to read how to read a text file in windows we use type command type and that file name in linux cat and that file name let's see that type and file name we will see this also in windows go to the build section and here because in this it will create a file right so type type this file name okay dot txt see here i'm here i'm storing environment variables in a text file here i am reading that build now hey yeah console output if you see before it was not there right it was very simple but now what i am doing i am redirecting that the redirecting there is no console but for typing means for listing is there means this is proved that the list is coming into env list.txt okay the same process it will applicable for linux but that we need to change the command okay you know right in linux we use cat command in windows we use type thank you hello welcome back in the last class we have seen how to print the environment variables in windows machine as well as in the linux machine now let us create a jar file how that jar file should be it should be with my build number means if i uh, if i am creating a build uh, if i am creating a jar in the first build then my jar name should be uh, like a uh, dev team underscore one dot jar second bill dev team underscore two dot jar automatically it has to come you got it right you know right this is the syntax to compile and create a jar file now my requirement is it should be in this way it should be dev team underscore whatever the bill name bill number it should be in this way let us create this okay I'm just copying this. Well, say first, I, what I will do, I will create a jar file. Okay. I will use the same one. Git job configure. Here build. Okay, I'm just removing this. Or I will do one thing instead of copy, typing every time. I will just cut it, and I will paste it here. Okay, okay. Now what it will do? It will create a jar file. Let us see. Okay. Also, what I will do, right? I will archive a file. 
post build actions okay comma star star dot jar okay what it will do it will archive the jar files that's fine because as of now it is not there right so it is showing in the red color it will create when the build got completes okay Why it is not there? Huh? Hello world dot Java. It is there. I don't know what is it problem. Oh, I given the wrong one. I think. Okay, sorry guys. I'm just giving this one. because that that url is totally different okay so i given the wrong one just removing this in this that uh, hello world file is not there because of that it is failing okay build now 36 console output okay yeah now it is success okay our jar is coming we do another one okay 37 is it progress okay completed just refresh this see here 36 also same jar 37 also same jar but how i come to know this jar has which changes i need 36 jar also how i can get i can't get because it is updating on the same jar so to avoid this what i will do i will create jar each and every time with the build number so that it will be unique correct right every time it will come with a new number build numbers can't be duplicate the same way our jar also it cannot be duplicate okay so configure build here what i will do right i will use this command okay you got it right now it will become duplicate instead of that what i will do i will do in this way so how now how the jar file will be dev team underscore build number dot jar okay let us see build now 38 okay finish just refresh this If you see my jar, my jar is with build number. Run it again. Refresh it. See, every time, every time when we run, it will create a new jar. So with that, we can easily identify. Okay, this jar belongs to this pipeline. This jar belongs to this pipeline. I mean, this build. Okay, you got it right. This way, we can use the environment variables. okay what else we can discuss okay we can also create a files in the windows you got it right we can also create a files in the windows with the build numbers okay anything is possible the syntax is this one the same same as like this instead of file we give the build number instead of uh, name hard coded we give the build number okay so in this way we will create a file let us see that okay i am archiving text okay how i am archiving text to file let us see that post build actions okay what i will do i will give star dot txt so that it will take all also what i am doing i am creating a text file echo hi i am just creating Okay. My text file should be only with build number. It should not be with any other. Okay, so I'm just giving build numbers. Save, build now. Since we given start dot txt, right? We already uh, saw that, like how to archive files. 
So I give start.txt, so it has to come. Let us see. See, everything got came and also build number.txt. If we run it again, then 41.txt will come. Okay, the same way, even Linux also the same way. Instead of percentage, we will use dollar and two curly braces. Okay, same. Got it right? This way, we will use the environment variables. Thank you. Welcome back. In the last few classes, we have been seen what are the environment variables, how to use that, how to uh, print uh, in the our in our build steps, and how to see the list. Everything we saw, even we saw how to compile our jar file or how to create our jar file with the help of build numbers. Everyone, everything we saw, but all those all those environment variables are given by Jenkins means we just used what are the environment variables that are provided by jenkins but in some cases in some cases we might need to create our own environment variables correct right why because to reduce the hard coding the paths example i have my artifact path which is 50 characters every time i can't give right so what i will do i will give that path as a value and name i will give artifactory within 10 characters so instead of using that 50 characters i will use this 10 characters correct also my group my lady my group my lady is like 30 characters instead of that i can create my name like cicd my lady it five six characters it will finish so in this scenarios we can create our own environment variables now let us see how to create to create that what we need to do manage jenkins and configure system go to the manage jenkins here click on configure system after that global properties okay search for that global properties okay here it is and environment variables here it is okay what is that after that we need to give add okay done okay we can give in this way the name means we will use in our build value means is actual value okay what i will give artifactory my artifact or artifact tree. I can give CICD. Okay. The value is HTT or some value what I can give. Just okay. My my teams my teams artifactory factory dot com. I'm just giving in a name what i will do i will just copy this if i give this uh, this name it has to print this one okay or even i will give http http double colon okay my company dot com say save we just copy this name right so where i will give i will give here itself configure and build and say echo my artifactory url is what i need to give in between these two i need to give okay now let us see what it will print build now 42 console output see my artifact url is http my team's artifact this is what we give right yes in this way we we can create our own uh, environment variables and we can use them hello welcome back 
now let us see an very very important concept in jenkins that is parameters every organization every company definitely they will use this one 100% they will use parameters 90 or 80% of the jobs definitely it will be with parameters environment variables may use or may not use or it may use 20 to 30 percent but parameters will be used for 80 percent okay let us see what it is okay parameters are just like environment variables it is a key and value but in environment variables can we change the uh, value example the key is uh, job name can i change that and the key is bill number can i change that no by default it will come i can't change that Correct, right? Java home. Can I change that? I can't change the value. It is the default which will be given by Jenkins. But here, here we can change the value. It is specific to the builds. It is specific to the builds. Okay. Here we can change the value and we can change the value for every build. Example. Now, let us take one example. Like developer want to do the build with another branch. This we will discuss with a new job. Okay, I'm creating a new job. The no job name will be health check or health report. Okay, health report freestyle. Here they are saying their code is in master or their code is in this project. What I am doing? I am cloning this. Okay source code management you get and here i'm giving save assume that we have giving the build steps okay build now okay my build got completed and what is the branch here my branch is master now now they are came they came again and they said uh, team now my code is not in master it is like a dev branch can you please make a build in dev branch then what do we need to do we need to come to the job configuration okay we need to come to the job configuration configure before what we gave we gave master now by default it will take master correct by default it will take master now we need to come and here we need to save this dev branch that what the requirement right dev branch initially we created with master now they are came and they ask we need to change okay we changed Build now. Okay, second got success. Come here. Okay, see now dev branch. Okay, see every time, every time if they come and if they change the branch and if they ask us to do, is it possible? It is not at all possible because we can't able to edit the job configuration whenever they reach us. Correct, right? We can't able to do that. And if it is one or two jobs and one or two times, we can able to edit. But it will be much more. And we can't, we can't able to edit all the time. So, like this, there will be more scenarios where we need to use parameters. Okay. Then what is parameter? Here you are saying like this, we need to use. Here, how parameters will help? Okay. You are saying this is a problem and because of that we are using parameters okay how parameters will solve this problem here is the point parameters or we will call build parameters are used to pass data to jenkins job here instead of editing the config what we do we do we will pass the data there is no need to change even developers can run the job by using parameters and they can choose whatever the branch they need they need no need to come to us and we don't need to change the config how with the help of parameters so clear with the help of parameters we can pass the data to the jenkins job here how we are as of now how we are passing we are going and editing the configuration you remember right example i want to pass master branch I need to edit here no as of from now there is no need to edit here we can pass fr from ui 
you got it right we can pass from u y any one can pass any one can pass the value from u y there is no need to come to configuration that is an advantages of parameters like what are the data we can pass we can pass so many like git branch as of now we saw no need to edit we can pass the branch password we can upload like uh, sometimes even we can say i need to run my java with specific version sometimes some developers want to compile their code with java 8 and sometimes java 11 sometimes java 17 so even that information we can pass like okay you can we can choose like as of now i want to run with uh, java 11 i can choose that okay in the ui there is no need to go to the config and change every time now you got it right what is the parameters good next we will see some more examples thank you hello welcome back in the last two classes we have seen what are the uses of parameters and what are the different types of parameters it is available in jenkins okay Like uh, these are the parameters that we discussed, right? It doesn't mean that we have only these parameters, which have much more. But these are the important parameters. Okay. Now, let us see how we can create this parameterized job and how to print that parameter value. To create a parameterized job, we use the following way. Go to the job configuration. First, we will create a job. Okay. I'll create parameters. Okay. Parameters job underscore example. Okay. I'm taking a freestyle. Okay. Now I'm in job configuration. Okay. Next, what I need to do? Select this project is parameters parameterized okay where is that option uh, here it is this project is parameterized select this now next okay done i chosen this option this project is parameterized yes correct next and choose the required parameter from the uh, add parameter list okay add parameter what i need to do i just i will take string parameter okay okay from this list i have chosen string parameter give some text or key oh uh, sorry give some text for key key name and value okay value is optional okay and this we can change while running the job okay this is saying that value is an optional we don't need to give okay but we will give let us see what will happen so some text for the key name okay this is like a I can say for uh, parameter okay job we can say any name or I can say branch name okay branch name here what we do enter uh, I can say enter or we can say default value we can give anything it's not like mandatory we need to give it is an optional okay value what i'm giving some temp temp branch i can say okay okay i have given. now let us see how to print if you print key then it has to display its value means if you print this then it has to display as temp let us see okay in windows we print the key in between percentage the same syntax which we have seen in environment variables see this how we need to print able to see right this how we need to print in linux we use dollar symbol the same syntax for printing it is the same syntax okay i'm just giving uh, I'm just printing, okay? This is Linux box, so execute shell echo my branch 
name is what i am giving dollar and that uh, key name this is the key name right save okay for normal jobs how it will be sample job i am just picking this sample job see build now for normal jobs means the jobs which are not parameterized it will it will be like build now but for parameterized job it will be like build with parameters you got it right for normal job it will be like build now but for parameterized it will be like build with parameters click here see first temp i'm just printing here assume that this is my temp is a branch name one dot completed see my branch name is temp okay now what i'm doing i am done with that now i want to give master so here i'm just typing my another branch name master build to got completed see now the branch name is master before what it is before it was one if you remember before it was temp see this is branch uh, first build my branch name is temp here my branch name is master where it is my branch name is master so here it is temp if you run again with a different name then that name will print you got it right this how we used to uh, create a parameterized job and we used to print that value thank you in the previous class we have seen what is the use of parameters the main use is we can pass the data to the build from dashboard no need to go and edit the configuration okay let us see what are the various types of parameters that are available in jenkins in jenkins we have various types of parameters and we can choose them based on our requirement correct we have some tens of parameters and based on our requirement we will choose one among this okay what are those string parameter here we can give the data like uh, it's a combination of any characters uh, numbers any some string like just now we saw right branch name branch, branch name is a string we can give in that way string parameter we have to enter the data at the time of build correct right in the we have to give the data at the time of build but in choice parameter we can't give the data in choice parameter we can't give the data instead we have to select our requirement data from list means we have already given some list in the choice parameter while building you need to choose only that example uh, i want to run with jdk7 i can't give while running the build what i will do i will already i will give this value already to the choice parameter then it will be in the drop down list it will be in the list form then i need to choose jdk7 11 or 8 or 17 whatever i need to choose that from that list and i need to do the build next is file parameter assume that my code my code is not in the any source code it is in my local it is my it is in my local mission then at the time of compile i need to upload that file i need to upload that file and i need to make a build you got it right my code is not in source code it is in my local first i need to check whether my code is correct or not then if it is success then i will push to the git to that for that i need to upload my file right i can't give i can't cut and copy and paste my you know in uh, jenkins i need to upload a file for that we use file parameters password we can give password like here whatever the string you give it will be in the hidden boolean here uh, it will be in checkbox if you check that box it will be like true if you won't check that box it is like false got it right it is like true or false we will we will uh, see all this in an examples no issues okay multi line here string right it, it will it should be in like uh, it won't take new line but here it will we can give the strings in the new line as well 
run parameter. Here we can pass the job URL. We can give it, give the other server Jenkins job URL also. It is possible. Okay. Like uh, these are the few parameters types. We will see one by one with detail. Thank you. Hello. Welcome back. In the last couple of classes, we have seen about parameters. Like uh, what are the uses of parameters, what are the different types of parameters, and uh, how to create a parameterized job, how to print the parameters in Windows and Linux. Okay. Now, let us see each parameter. Okay. Let us discuss about each parameter one by one. First in the list will come string parameter. String parameter is, is a very important parameter and most of the times we will, we will use this. Right? Okay, let us discuss this parameter with one scenario. The scenario is how to pass branch name as a parameter for a build. Okay. First, before seeing how to pass, let us see why I need to pass a branch name as a parameter. First, we will discuss why I need to pass a branch name as a parameter. Then we will see how to pass. Okay. Yeah. Assume that I am not using any parameter. Okay. I am creating one job. My job name is MHB underscore QA. Okay. It's a freestyle. Okay. Here my requirement is uh, I need to make a Java build. Okay. So this is our GitHub. I'm choosing this one. So how to clone this project? Go to code, copy this URL, and come here. Source code management, git. Yes, got it. Okay. And in uh, build section, I will do. I'm just listing it, okay? I'm just listing the files. Save. Build now. Okay, come to console output. Now, if you see here, this is successfully completed. Okay, but with what branch? The branch is master. So, now the developers are working in master so we have given the master now one of the developer came and he said boss i am done with master i am not working currently with master branch instead i am working with different branch what is that branch here are the branches he said he is working in dev branch so he will come to us and he will ask to change the master from master to dev branch you got it right he is saying by default my jenkins build is triggering only master he what the developer is saying he is saying i am not working with master i want to test or i want to build my job with this branch he will come to us because why he is coming to us because he can't change the branch correct right he can't able to change the branch so he will request us okay what we need to do? We need to go to the again into the configuration. Configure. Go to the source code management. Here, by default, by default, Jenkins will take master. You got it right? Why always I clone the master? Because it is like that. By default, it will take master as the default branch so what he's saying okay he's saying change to this branch okay what is the branch dev branch okay no issues i change to dev branch save build now okay go to the console output see now it cloned dev branch before it was master okay now another developer will come he will say boss i am not working with dev branch i need i am working in some different branch 
so change it see do you think this is practically correct no we can't change each and every time each and every time one of the developer will come they will ask to change that we can't do this right we can't we can't go and we can't keep editing the job so instead of that what we will do we will use the parameters okay let us see how the parameters will help now you got it right what is the problem if we use uh, what is the problem if we won't use parameters now let us see how parameters will solve our problem here what is swing parameter it is a name and value pair okay name cannot change by developer okay name cannot change by developer okay no issues while running the job we can change the value means name we can't change but we can change the value at every time got it right name will not be changed but value can be changed every time in job configuration we will give the name wherever we required see name can't change by developer right so the same name we will give in the configuration okay now what will happen the value will replace the name during the execution you got it right now name we will give we are not giving value name will we will give in the configuration every time it will be the same name it won't change in the configuration so we we are now we we don't need to edit the name correct right name will be the same name will be the constant but value can change got it right value can change every time of the build and value will replace the name now it resolved our problem right let us see let us see how to do that okay you got it right name will be the same throughout the job configuration but at the run time that name will be replaced by the value now let us see how we can use this okay you got the problem right okay. i should not i need to change the branch but i should not change the configuration every time okay go to the this one configure here select this project is parameterized next add parameter and select string parameter okay add string parameter name okay here give my branch okay just copy this default value we can give anything like uh, assume that oh, sorry assume that i by default it should be the master okay now enter a name yes value and description is optional okay optional but still we have given this name is my branch and default value is master okay okay string parameter name and value we given next now give this name in source code section under build specifier how we can give we can give in this name this is the same syntax that what we are saying the syntax is same whether it is in linux or windows okay got it right this name we need to give where under branch specifier go to the source code management under the branch specifier give like this okay save this now trigger with parameters okay master then go to the console output let us see whether it has taken master okay very good master it has taken now again i am building with dev branch dev branch the same right dev branch correct now let us see build completed see did we change the configuration 
no every developer can use this every developer can test their branch without changing the configuration without asking us to change the configuration see this is one of the example but we can use a string parameter or any parameter in number of ways in number of places you got it right how string parameter uh, saves our time or how we can uh, pass the branch name i hope you understand if not just let me know i will try to explain much more thank you hello welcome back in the last class we have seen about string parameter like what is the main use of string parameter and how to create that so string parameter is like name and value value we need to give while we are running the job but in choice parameter we can't give the value we need to pick. we need to pick from the list already some predefined values will be there you got it right string we will give every time a new one but in choice what will happen right we can't give the new one we need to pick whatever is there in the list we need to choose one value from the list we can't give new value that what we can't give new value while we are running the job okay we need to pick we need to we can only pick one value which are there in the list for previous example string parameter is a correct one because we don't have control on the branch creation branch creation can be dynamic you got it right branch creation can be dynamic like every time every day they will create new branch the tall branches we can't give in the list so for using the branches we use string parameter but repositories are not like that repositories should be created by the admin and it is very rare once in a month or once in 2 to 3 months we used to create a repository at the time why i need to give repository in the uh, in the form of string whatever is there the repositories i will give in the list because it won't change right if it is changed then we can go for the this one uh, string parameter if it is not changed then why i need to use string parameter instead of that that i can use choice parameter you got it right what is the uses of choice parameter okay let us see the creation is same okay we will see that choice parameter so how to create this project is parameterized and choose the choice parameter okay go to the dashboard here i will uh, create new job choice parameter okay freestyle choose this project is parameterized okay and select choice parameter select repository name okay like what are the choices i can give like this okay i will give two to three projects okay java project okay next once we give the value right just press enter okay after java project i can use this one as well i will choose one more last one i will use this one new new i have created the list but how i can say i need to clone this uh, this java project or i need to clone this java project we have just created one parameter but how to use that okay now go to the source code management okay just copy this name 
go to the source code management next give like this okay i will explain source code management right git okay just clone any url any java project just clone any java project okay i'm clothing this if you give like this what will happen every time java project uh, repo will clone but i should not do like that so instead of that what i need to give i need to give parameter name in this format this is same syntax for windows and linux no change at all okay in source code management instead of repo name what i need to give i need to give parameter name okay so in runtime it will replace that what is the parameter name select repo name this is my parameter <coughs> source code management so instead of project name what i will give i will give dollar and the parameter name got it right the syntax is correct okay save build with parameters see now it is asking i can choose any one i can choose any repo you just build it go to the console output okay see cloning which one git first repo okay now we will clone some other one now i am cloning java before i use different one right git first okay now instead of that i will use java project go to the console output see now it is cloning java project got it right how to use a choice parameter thank you welcome back in the last class we have seen about string parameter like we have seen what are the advantages of string parameter and how to pass a branch name as a parameter now let us see about file parameter okay like one of the developer requirement is he want to test his java code one of the developer requirement is he want to test his java code before committing the code to source code means before committing the code to source code or git he want to test his java code how he can test normally jenkins will take the code from source code but here developer should not commit until unless he is confirm with his code for that we will use the file parameter here here what is the uh, use of this we can upload a file okay we will see that how we can do that select this project is parameterized okay first we will create a new one file parameter okay okay next select this project is parameterized okay next choose file parameter okay then next enter the file location if you are uploading the same location then it's enough if we give the file name alone we are uploading into the same location same location in the sense workspace okay yes this is my same location i want to upload into my workspace then what i need to give i need to give the program name okay this file i am planning to upload the name is hello world dot java okay so i am just giving the name hello world dot java okay what else i need to give okay and it build step we can give like this okay we are uploading now now we need to compile right the same the same we can do this okay in the build step add build windows batch we can give either way okay 
like with regular expression or without regular expression java c hello world dot java java hello world okay save build with parameters okay see now it is asking for file okay choose file i have chosen java programs so here i am choosing java file the file name is hello world dot java just make a build okay done done okay now we will change this one instead of jenkins say local machine okay save this now run it again okay build with parameters choose file okay build see local machine got it right this we compiled by uploading a java file okay thank you hello welcome back now let us see another parameter the type of that parameter is boolean we know right boolean means either true or false the same it will applicable here so what boolean parameter will return it will return always true or false okay got it right it will be some checkbox if you select that checkbox then it is equal to true if you unselect that checkbox then it is equal to false let us see that like my requirement is how to check whether the build is triggered by manually or auto builds like i want to differentiate my build execution based on manual or automatic means if it is manual build then certain commands has to execute if it is auto builds like build periodically or poll acm then it has to trigger some other commands got it right so i want to differentiate this we will see how to do that create a job my job name is boolean okay i just creating boolean freestyle okay now i created my job next select parameter type as boolean okay this project is parameterized and the one is boolean parameter okay declare a variable example is manual triggered here my parameter name is is manually triggered okay i am choosing the same is manually triggered okay next okay okay don't choose anything now go to the shell command build steps execute execute shell here what i am choosing i need to write this code okay i need to write this code okay what is this code if condition i need to write first i will copy this okay build steps if if space brushes and give the variable name here how we can give we need to use dollar symbol and that variable name after this we are checking the condition if this is true means if this checkbox is checked so then then i'm just printing echo this is triggering manually correct right this is triggering manually else we need to give else part right if it is not triggered means if it is false means the checkbox is not checked then what will happen else echo 
this build is auto triggered okay i am closing the if condition okay save this now i am choosing build with parameters okay. now what see i am triggering build manually got it right i am triggering build manually so i am choosing this option if i want to trigger my build manually then definitely i need to choose this if i choose this this then what will happen this parameter it will become true if i choose this will become true now it is false by default it will be false if you select then it will become true now make a build see my second completed come, come here console output if you see this is triggered manually correct right that build is triggered manually now we will see some auto builds okay i am cloning this okay come here go to the configure configure go to the source code management git repository url okay and uh, build triggers what we will do build periodically and we will give every minute okay save this if you see third one it got completed now let us see see the console output okay see if you see this this build is auto triggered this build is auto triggered if because it is run from uh, like build periodically right so it is an auto build now i have again last run build with parameters okay. by default this option will not be there until and unless we check this correct right while running manually we will check this but if it's auto builds then this option will be disabled right you got it right if you do manual build then we will check this if it is auto then this option will not be checked because of this we are getting the difference if we check this then the it will become true my if condition will become true so this will execute if it is auto build that option will be disabled means false then this option will be this condition will be executed so you got it right boolean parameter this way we can use this thank you hello welcome back in the last couple of classes we have seen about different types of parameters and how to use that now let us see another important topic like how to pass parameters to another job like as of now we have created parameters in the same job but i need to uh you know i need to pass these parameters to another jobs like downstream jobs how to do that this is one of the important guys definitely we will use this let us see how to configure this okay first create a parameterized job okay this is my parameterized job got it right this is my parameterized job okay this indicates that right if my build is parameterized then my option will be like this okay we know that next yes we created now go to the post build actions okay where it will be it will be in configure post build actions correct here what i need to choose trigger parameterized build on other projects this option i need to choose in post build actions okay what is that trigger parameterized where it is it is not there right yes by default by default we can't pass parameters from one job to another job so by default is not there then what is the other option we need to install a plugin by default we can't able to send parameters to another job if by default is not working what is the other way 
we need to install the plugin got it right yeah so what plugin we need we need to use parameterized trigger plugin which plugin we need to use we we need to use parameterized trigger plugin okay come to dashboard manage jenkins and plugins parameterized see this one okay parameterized trigger parameterized trigger okay like we will be back once restart is done now restart is done and i'm just entering here okay now go to the job we will see whether we got that option or not okay where i need to give sorry, where i need to go in the post build section post build actions and which option trigger parameterized build on before it was not there right now let us see whether it is there or not see we got it right before this was not there okay we need to choose this which project i need to build see you are saying trigger parameterized okay i am saying trigger this by passing the parameter so which build i need to trigger that name we need to give here we we'll do one thing we will use testing okay no issues we can just for testing only right testing okay automatically it will prompt okay next now go to the build actions okay selected yes project to build name of the other project yes we have given next trigger when build is complete trigger when build is stable like as of now i'm choosing complete okay next choose current build parameter okay choose current build parameters okay that what we discussed right choose current build parameters correct next configuration on other job okay here job name is health qa i mean here i am saying right health qa but we have taken testing no issues okay go to the testing job configuration okay okay go to the other job configuration here it is testing okay next create same parameter we got it right we need to create the same parameter that we did here here which parameter we have created we have created repo name we need to create the same parameter okay this project is no need of same type we even we can choose string no issues in that but same parameter should be there not the same type of parameter okay you got it right same type not required same name has to be there okay and now save this or what we will do we'll just print this okay what name it will come default i will give testing or i will give variable in same project just say i will say just testing value okay go to the build step instead of that echo since this is linux based right so i'm just printing here repo name right okay save that and uh, first we will run this job testing value i'm just printing 
it should print testing value no other option for that okay testing value very good now let us see how it will print now okay save this build with parameter now if i run this job with this value then what it will do it will call this job by passing this as a value before how what it will print before what it has print it printed testing value but now what it has to print it has to print mhb got it right now if i run this job it will call this job and it will pass this value so instead of testing value it has to this job has to print mhb let us see so now i trigger this okay or i will whether this got triggered okay see here two year three okay i will do it again okay build three is completed here four has to come yeah four came just see console output see what it is mhb from where this got it got from here now we will change this i'm just triggering health see now it is third right four will come okay here five has to come okay five is in pending let's wait five completed now what will happen go to the console output see health. you got it right if it if it is trigger then it is passing the parameters from here to here and it is printing if you run the same job if you run the same job then this value will come if i run the same job then this value will come if it is triggered by upstream then that parameter value will come you got it right thank you hello welcome back now let us see how we can rerun the build or what is the use of rebuilder plugin okay what is meant by rerun rerun means whatever the build got completed assume that i used few parameters and i run one job now i need to rerun it again with the same parameters you got it right okay we will see in one example okay this is my job name and this is my build okay what are the parameters that i used in this build here we can see this okay these are the parameters i used now i need to run again with the same parameters that is my requirement you got it right i want to rerun the job again with the same parameters how we will see by default by default we can't rerun the build jenkins will not support this option by default see if you see any re retry or rerun here no if i want to run with the same parameters again again i need to come here build with parameters manually triggered cicd branch name i don't know what i given so what i need to do i need to come here go to the build number parameters okay dev i need to compare and i need to give apart from that i don't have other option right every time i need to come every time i need to give like this okay that is karthik okay multi line i can give this one and here karthik team name cicd okay see this is headache right if i want to use the same parameters it would be good right if if we have that option like just retry no need to give all the parameters again and again since manual there might be the mistakes got it right for that we will use this option okay by default we can't rerun the job we need to give the parameter every time correct right yeah 
if you want to just retry with the parameters which is used recently then we need to use rebuild plugin you got it right to solve this problem what plugin we need to use we need to use rebuild plugin okay so we know right how to install plugins go to the dashboard manage jenkins plugins available here rebuild okay rebuild see this is the plugin we'll be back once this is done now my restart has been completed go to the dashboard this is a job right okay if you see here rebuild last before this option was there no it is not there it is not there okay even we have rebuild before this option was not there okay now what if if you click here see all my parameters are there whatever the parameters i have given in the first one it is there okay if we rebuild this the same parameter it will take and it will execute the third one got it right the same parameters the same parameters it will use see rebuild number 2 again i am doing this rebuild okay even even we can change the parameters we can use the same parameters or if you want few parameters if you want to change we can change now i am giving qa this is also possible now you got it right what is the use of this plugin yeah that what we discussed right even we can change the parameters okay yeah we will see whether our we edited one parameter right we will see whether that plugin will come or not see qa the rest will be the same if you compare with third one third console output it will be the same except branch okay except branch the remaining values are same now you got it right what is the use of this thank you in the last class we have seen about rerun like what is the use of rerun and how we can achieve how we can achieve or how we can do the rebuild by using rebuilder plugin now my requirement is i want to rerun that i want to rerun a build which is failed assume that my build is failed and i am using some parameters now i want to rerun that with the same parameters absolutely same even there is no need to change even one parameter i want to rerun the job as it is with the same parameters at the time what will happen we can use this you got it right we can use this definitely we can use this but here i need to give confirmation means here rebuild okay here see i when i click re, rebuild right again i need to do rebuild means two times i am doing rebuild there is now i should not do this see definitely i need to run with the same parameters then why i need to click twice if it is a failed build i need to rerun it again then why i need to confirm two times i don't want to confirm two times i want to click only once for that what we use we use naginator plugin with the help of this we will achieve that requirement means if we rerun that it won't ask to uh, like it won't show the parameters to edit it will directly rerun got it right we will see okay mostly we will uh, like uh, not mostly we will see this option only in the failure builds for successful builds we will not see this option correct right for failure builds only we need to rerun for success there is no need to rerun okay what is the plugin we need to use naginator okay come to here uh let's see if rerun is there no 
rebuild lost is there but not rerun okay or we will do one thing we will make a build failure okay oh to make build success is easy but sorry to make build uh, success is difficult but to make build failure is very easy right simple it build will get fail okay i'm just rerunning this okay failure good here any uh, rebuild is there okay again it is asking for prompt again i need to confirm i should not do this if i click retry immediately it has to start no need the confirmation for that what i need to do i need to install one more plugin called which plugin this one okay manage jenkins plugins available and nanki nature this one okay this plugin reschedules failed jobs okay we will be back once this is done okay dashboard go to the build parameters okay i just said right this will be there only in the failed builds go to this see retry is there right see come come to fourth build with a retry is there no because this build got success oh, sorry just wrongly clicked on deletion i think why that retry is not there here because this build got success because of that that option will not be there so come to fifth one means which is the failed builds just click on retry see did it did it ask for prompt no it will just rerun and this is the symbol of rerun if you want to run it again okay we will run it again retry again failed okay so we will make it success go to the configure build steps remove this save okay now come here and say retry definitely it will get success success okay now let us see that retry will option will be there or not it is not there you got it right how to what is the use of retry and what is the use of this plugin hello welcome back in the last two classes we have seen about rebuild and retry now we will see one more re that is replay okay where we will see this this we will not see in the normal builds this we will see only in the pipeline jobs you got it right this option means replay we can see only in the pipeline jobs it won't show for parameters like if you are using any parameter then it won't show like how we did how we edited in the rebuild right in in that way we can't edit here instead we can see the pipeline code whatever the pipeline code is there we can see that and we can edit that you got it right we can edit that changes also but whatever we edited right that will specific to that build number it won't change the or it won't save permanently got it right we can edit we can edit while we are doing the build but that changes will be specific to that build number it won't change permanently next build will run with the same code that is there in the pipeline got it right we will see in the example for this what is a job type i need to choose i need to choose pipeline as a job type just enter i'm just giving pipeline example okay what is a job type i need to select pipeline okay go to the pipeline i'm just creating hello world okay 
I'm just copying this. I'm editing and I pasted here. Uh, if you want to learn complete uh, almost 100 examples on the pipelines, then I have my Jenkins course. If anyone wants to learn about the pipeline, like a declarative pipeline example, this is my another course. Okay, where we will discuss almost 100 plus examples for around five of hours. Okay, if you want to learn more about the pipeline, you can use this. Now, I just copied this code. Okay, I'm just pasted here. I'm saving. Now, I saved my code and I'm doing a build. Build now. See, build now what it is doing? Directly it is building. It is not asking for anything. But if you go for replay, if you go for replay, what it will do? It will ask for the code edition. If I do this again, okay, I'm not editing anything. I'm just running this. So what the output in seven? The same, hello world. Okay, hello world. Now, from seven, I am running it again replay here i'm just saying hello jenkins i'm just printing hello jenkins i'm just running this see eighth one right console output hello whether this change the uh, main code no it won't change it will specific to the build number we will see the latest we have given hello jenkins right let us see whether hello world is there or hello Jenkins. It is hello world. You got it right? What is the use of replay? Thank you. Now let us see the main difference between these three options like uh, rebuild, retry, and replay. These are the features. Like first is can we change the parameter? In rebuild, yes. Got it right? In rebuild, we can change the parameters in retry no in replay yes we can change but how as a pipeline code got it right as a pipeline code we can change that can we see in the success job yes rebuild we can see in the success job retry no we can't see retry will see only in the failure one replay yes for successful Pipeline so successful pipeline builds also we can see. Can we see the rebuild in failure jobs? Yes, we can see. For retry, yes, we can see. And replay also we can see. Can do for pipeline jobs? Yes, this is possible. We can see the rebuild in pipeline also, but retry we can't see. Okay. Replay, yes, definitely. This is meant for pipeline only. What are the plugin for rebuild? Rebuilder. And for retry? Naginator. And for replay? There is no plugin. By default, it will come. Configuration? This is like job level. Okay? Retry. Retry means it is for the build level. And a replay? It is also for the build level. Got it right? These are the quick summary on these three options. Thank you hello welcome back now let us see another important it means every company or every organization they will do this the thing is how to download artifact or files or logs from the builds like last couple of classes we have seen right how to compile a java file and how to create a jar file from the java programs now let us see how to do how to download that by default by default once the build completes developers can't able to download the artifacts or files which got generated from builds see if you come here i will take this one git job or java from git i think this is where we created jar file let us check that 
yeah see the bill go okay uh, we will trigger one more time uh, three is in progress what it will do it will create a jar file okay so build success means there is no compile issues good but it got created what it got created it got created jar file now i need to download that jar file and i need to test further the build got success it means that there is no issues in my code but now i need to test further maybe functionality wise i need to check the code but for that i need jar file but how i can get that jar file by default jenkins won't give we need to configure we need to configure such a way that whatever the files we need we need to able to download okay let us see how we can do that artifacts like can anything like jar file or war file or html or log anything anything whatever we want for this what we need to use we need to use archive the artifacts option what this will do this will help developers to download the artifacts easily from the page itself they can able to download where this will be this will be inside the job configuration this is a job specific right so job configuration go to job configure here post build actions and add post build action post build actions add post build action here what i need to choose archive the artifacts archive the artifacts this how i need to do after that we need to give what is what is the file that i need to archive okay like uh, if i want html then i can give abc.html if i want mhb dot jar then i need to give in this way but let us see what we have in this what is the source code way we are given java project right java project correct here i have java okay i will i will i need to download this file so i'm just copying this the syntax is same right file name dot extension so file name is hello world extension is dot java so the same i will give here files to archive same same okay now let us see see here is there anything to download no but if you build now i'm just giving build now i'm just opening in the next tab let us see now the build got completed successfully see now we got right we got a file to download in the same way we can get a jar file as well we will see that in the next class thank you hello welcome back in the last class we have seen how to archive a single file but definitely there will be more than one archive file then how i can do that also with the help of regular expression how i can ar archive multiple files we'll see this in this session first to do archiving more than one file we can use simple way as comma separator okay example hello world.jar hello.txt anything anything we can give this this is a simple one without regular expression or we can give we can give comma as a separator okay as of now we have hello world.java so even i want to archive log.txt let us see that go to the configure 
postable actions after first file gives comma and give the second one log dot txt save this and build now as of now we have only one file hello world dot java we have given log dot txt also see we got it right even we can give jar file as well so configure but assume that i don't know the jar file name then how i can give see jar file i know it is created but i don't know the name so this way also we can give star means any name any name it may be any name but after that the end should be dot jar the end should be dot jar star means anything and end should be its extension should be dot jar okay let us see that post build actions okay here i am giving star dot jar save and build now 10 is in progress and got completed just refresh this see i got the first jar just click on this it is downloaded you got it right in this way we can able to download the artifacts we can give in this format also see assume that i have some multiple jars uh, which will start with uh, some different different names but i need means my project jars will start with hell hello hi or some some name i'm just randomly i'm selected this okay so i need to download the artifacts only those which will start with hell followed by any name and extension should be dot jar this is also possible okay we will see that okay just come to configure build section first go to the build section here what i will do right i will create three four uh jar files okay second one third one here instead of first i will write uh what to say main jar main oh one dot jar okay so this how i created i i don't need first jar i don't want to download this jar i want to download these two okay let us see how we can do that here come down i'm just removing this here instead of uh, star what i will do here what i need to do main or ma that what right ma i'm just giving ma after that it should follow any name now what i'm giving i'm manually saying that don't archive this jar archive only these two whatever the condition it satisfies it will do okay ma maybe as of now it dot did not created right so because of that it is saying it is not available as of now okay but the syntax is correct ma ma okay save this and build now now it has to replace with all these three files with those two jar files let us see that uh, 11 is in progress completed just refreshing this see it got right we got it right with single regular expressions we have given this i can able to download this even i can able to download this as well okay this how we use regular expression or multiple uh, artifacts by separating comma 
Thank you. Hi. Now, let us see how we can archive our files which are in different folders. As of now, we have seen uh, the archiving the files which are in the workspace. See, direct workspace, whatever the files are there, we used to archive. But my files, like whatever the uh, files I am planning to archive, is not in the workspace. It is in the different folder. Now, I want to archive those. We will see how to do that. We need to create a folder first here. So, to create a folder or file, go to here and select create a file. Give directly name if you want to create a file. But uh, to give a folder, what we need to do, just giving and give forward slash. What will become? It will become a automatically folder and give the file name. Just giving uh, log in, like a reference. Reference logs. I'm just giving just any name you can give. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello. Just giving hello. Okay. Commit. Yes. Now, where my log is inside a folder, inside a folder called code. So, this one I need to archive. So, how to do that? To archive files from different location, we use following syntax. What is this? Folder name folder name slash star dot jar file or extension okay what we give we give folder name that is the important one okay come here configure what is my folder name it's code see case sensitive is very important we need to give as it is C O T E. Okay, post build actions. C O D E slash what is the file name or any file name we don't need, right? We just give code slash star dot txt. But extension we know, right? It's uh, txt. Save build now. Okay, tool is in progress. Completed. Click come here. See, it got cloned. Got it right? This way we can use. Uh, we need to use the you know, logs which are or any artifacts which is in different location. The syntax is folder name slash that extension. Thank you. Welcome back. Now let us see how to make case insensitive while archiving artifacts. By default, archiving artifacts will be case sensitive. Means this hello and this hello are different. You got it right? By default, archiving the artifacts will be case sensitive. Means these both because the only difference here and here is here it is capital L and here it is small L. Now I want to make both equal. My requirement is I want to make both equal. Let us see how it is. Okay. Uh, now we will take this as an example. What is the related uh, git? This is the one. Here I want to archive this file hello.txt. Here this file is starting with a capital letter. Let us see. And I am planning to archive this file. Okay. Configure. Post build actions. Archive. Hello. What is the complete name? Hello.txt. Okay. Apply. And I'm just running in 
another tab build now Seventy five is in progress completed just refresh this i got it right that what it is and the same i got here and the same i have mentioned here now i'm changing this to small letter apply this let us see what will happen build now 76 it got success but it is not there why it got success why build got success see here we might check this one when i'm unselecting this means if you select this even though the artifact is not there it will make the build success i am removing that let us see that Seventy-seven is in progress. It should fail. Yeah, the build is failed because the artifact is not there. See, everything is same. Only capital means case sensitive. Archiving the artifacts are case sensitive. Now I want to remove this behavior. Means it has to take archiving whether uh, it is a capital letter or small letter. Means it should not consider case sensitive. It should take case insensitive for that what we need to choose treat include and exclude patterns as case sensitive let us see where it is see this one correct by default it will be selected so we can make this as case sensitive by unselecting means by default it will be in select state we need to do we need to unselect that okay just removing that and apply now make a build build is not again yeah if you see 78 gold build success click on this and refresh it see it got artifact right yes. even if you see 76 it won't be archived okay but 78 it should be archived see this how we can make uh, you know, case insensitive while archiving the artifacts. Thank you. Our next question is how to exclude few files from archiving. Okay. Sometimes we need to exclude some files even though if it matches the archiving syntax. Example, like secret.txt. You got it right? Even though the syntax matches. Even though the archive syntax matches, I need to exclude few files to archiving. Let us see that. Here, come to here. See, if I archive this one, okay, configure, post build actions, star.txt. What will happen? It will get all these three files. One, two three one two three but i should not get this secrets file here the i assume that there are some keys are there or some passwords are stored somehow some reason it should be reference only for cicd or devops team developers should not see this should not download this how to do that clearly i'm saying don't close this file or don't archive this file even i'm saying don't sorry also don't archive this file okay commit changes 
See, I am clearly saying, don't clone and don't archive. But my syntax is this. Let us see what will happen. Just closing this. Build now. It's 16 is in progress. Completed. Yes, refresh. See? What will happen? What happened? All the three files, even the secret one also, got archived. We can directly see this, but I want to exclude. I should not change the archive syntax. Just remember, I should not change the archive syntax because if I change, assume that I have 100 or 20 to 30 txt, I need to give each and every dot txt hi.txt, log1, log2, or error message.txt, like that 20 I need to give. It's very headache for me. The syntax should be simple, star.txt. Still, I need to exclude this one. Still, I need to exclude the few files. How to do that? By using exclude syntax. Where this will be the same in job config, post build actions, archive, post build actions, archive, advance here see the exclude this is the one here what i want to exclude i want to exclude this file okay just copy this this file i need to exclude okay save now run the build 17 is in progress let us see Completed. Just refresh this. See? Did I change any syntax? No. I just add an extra option. Okay? This how we will exclude our important file from archiving. Thank you. Let us see what if the given artifact is not available. As of now, what we saw, we saw the artifacts that are there and also what are the artifacts that will come after the build. Both we saw. In the both cases, the artifacts are available. Now, let us see if the artifact is not there and also it won't be generated even though our build got completed. See, both ways. Currently, it is not there. And also, after completion of the build also, it won't come. What I'm doing, hi dot, I'm giving hi dot txt. Just apply this. See, this message means currently this artifact is not available. Okay, currently, whatever the in workspace, this artifact is not there. Maybe it, it will come after the build. It will come after the build. At the time, no issues. It We can able to download. But my artifact, the artifact which I have given, like a, just giving errors dot txt or errors dot log. This file, this file is not there. Even it won't come after the build. Then what will happen? Just saving this, coming out, build now. See, you got it right. The artifact is currently not there and also it won't come even our build completes. Then what will happen? See, this is how it will happen. What will happen? The build will get fail. Whatever it is saying, whatever the uh, artifacts you are giving, it is not there. So, I am making a build fail. But, I want to... Uh, my build should success even though the artifact is not there. See, that is not the compilation issue, right? That is not at all the issue from developer. Then why you need to fail the build? Okay. To make this build success. See, whatever the artifacts, if the artifact is not there, what will happen? The build will fail. My build should not fail. My build should not fail even though the request artifact is not there. For that, what we use, the option called do not fail build if archiving returns nothing. We need to choose this option. Where this option? It will be in the job config. 
go to the post build actions and here click on the advance okay here select where this one do not fail build do not fail build if archiving returns nothing select this save and build now let us see what will happen build is success and there is no artifacts to download because it is not available if it is not available then why you need to make the build fail correct right build got success but we didn't find any artifacts because it is not with their name thank you hello welcome back now today we will discuss a very very important point and every organization definitely they will do this in their companies the thing is they will delete old bills definitely they will do deletion of old bills now the question is why we need to delete old bills so every company will do they will delete the old bills but why why they will delete the old bills we will see this as an example assume that we have a job called a so my job name is a and every time it builds it will take 5 mb space means every time the a job runs it will take 5 mb space in the server what that 5 mb space contains like artifacts git code logs etc got it right every time a job runs it will take 5 mb per day this a job runs 10 times let us assume that on an average this a job runs 10 times a day and each time how much it will take 5 mb so how many times it is running in a day 10 times so total how much it will take a day the a job needs 50 mb space because it is running 10 times and each time it will take 5 mb so total how much it will be okay see if in an organization it won't be one or two jobs right definitely it will be hundreds or thousands definitely 100 jobs or 1000 jobs will be there but we are taking our example as 500 jobs okay so assume that our company has 500 jobs and each job needs 50 mb see this is what we discussed right each job it needs 50 mb so how many jobs we have 500 500 jobs so 500 jobs into 50 mb means each job it is taking 50 mb so how much total it will be 50 into 500 it is equal to 2500 mb which is equal to 24 gp so for jenkins every day we need 24 gp okay to run all the jobs on an average we need 24 gp okay per day 24 gp what about the per month it would be 24 gp into 30 days see per month it is around 720 gp okay if it is 720 GB per month, how much for per year? It would be around 8640 GB. Means 720 per month into 12 months, which is equal to 8640 GB. Means 8.5 terabyte. Got it right? See, now it is mostly not possible. Like big, big uh, offices or companies like Google, Microsoft, even they won't maintain this. If my jobs are really required, then it is a, then it is, we can maintain that. But if it is not required, 99% of the data is not required, then why I need to maintain? Why I need to pay extra hardware? Got it right? Because of that, we won't keep old days. Okay. Also, see, a job runs 10 times a day. Correct, right? A job runs 10 times a day. Per year, how many times it would, it would have run? 3650 so in a year this a job ran 3650 times right? if see in 3650 i hardly need last 10 or last 20 worst case last 100 so i need only last 100 bills to see the logs to see the uh, any other output then what about the remaining 3500 jobs 3500 bills why i need to keep that got it right 
see this a ran almost 3650 times i hardly need 100 or 150 then why i need to maintain 3500 builds definitely not it right got it right so because of this we need to go for deletion old or so this is important guys next to two to three classes it's depend on this okay hello welcome back now let us see how to delete an old or unused bills in the previous session we saw why we need to delete why we need to delete old or unused bills we saw with an example the conclusion is we need to delete at any cost we have to delete old or unused bills to save the space now let us see how to do that okay we can do this in two ways the first way and very easiest way is manually okay to delete any build it's where build will be there definitely inside a job so first what we need to do we need to select a job okay we can choose any job here i am choosing git job okay we have chosen a job next we need to choose which bill number we are going to delete for that what we need to do we need to click on the bill number okay we need to click on the bill number okay any bill number and we can take i am choosing six so i am just clicking on the bill number after that what i need to do we need to choose an option called delete build number so this option we need to choose let us see where that option will be okay if you see here it is delete build number it will ask yes see now whether six is there no six is got deleted even we can delete any job even we can delete the second one the failure one i want to delete it so i selected the second bill and i have chosen the delete bill number yes see now all the bills are green just we can choose anyone this way we can delete and we can delete directly from build history no need to select the build number and after say after select this option no need this also possible but even we can delete without entering into the build number from build history also we can delete a build number let us see how we can do that see this is the build history right so no need to enter just come on the build number you can see the drop down one right click on that here we have this option delete build number just choose that it will ask just say yes see nine got deleted if you want to delete 10 so just select that and okay this how we can delete a build number manually next step we will see what is the other way 99% we won't use this one 99% we won't use this one. even though it is a simple and straightforward we won't use this we will go for the another way we will see what are the advantages of that and why we need to choose that thank you hello welcome back in the previous class we saw why we need to go for deleting old or unused bills the straight away answer is to save the space we need to go for deleting old or unused bills we also saw deleting bills manually how to delete a bill manually select any bill number which we want to delete and click on the option delete it is a simplest and easiest way but most of the companies i can say 100 percent of the companies will not follow this method they won't go they won't delete bills manually why because they have few disadvantages they have few disadvantages when we choose build to delete manually we will see what are those okay assume that we have a job a which run 10 times in a day so in a year assume that it ran or almost 300 days so how many bills it will be 300 into 10 it will be around 
3000 bills so for one job the bill number will be 3000 assume that we have 500 jobs then 500 into 3000 500 into 3000 it will be around 15 lakhs so now i have 15 lakh bill numbers see guys is it possible to go and delete 15 lakh jobs no right it is not at all possible because it will take some years to delete that correct right it will take some years to delete the bill numbers if you choose manual because of this we won't choose that we will go the second option the second one is automatically so we will configure jobs in a such a way that the old or unused bills has to delete automatically we don't need to go and we need to delete which we say you have to delete like this so jenkins will take care of deletion we won't do any manual work so simple right so every company will go for automatically then why then who will go for deleting manually if there are very simple jobs like i have only 5 or 10 jobs which have only 15 to 20 bill numbers then we can go for bill deleting bills manually but if a huge organization where at least 300 plus developers then they have to go for deleting bills automatically now we will see how to configure this using discord old build option with discord old build option we can delete bill numbers automatically where this option will have in job configuration so select any job here in our case select we will select this one okay we selected this in job configuration so this is a job and this is a configure here which what is option discord old bits select this okay here two ways we can delete old or unused bits how many ways two ways this is first way and this is second way okay. we will see one by one first one deleting based on days means if you if you give any days here assume that i am giving five days what it will do it will keep only the bills that got triggered in last five days so whatever the bill it got triggered in the last five days those bill numbers only it will keep it will delete the rest got it right okay we will see in, in this example okay uh, okay we will take one pick okay. assume that today is sunday okay today is sunday and uh, uh our bill got triggered from 1 to 5 okay and monday came so monday came what will happen monday will become the latest one correct so i can say day 1 what will become sunday it will become say all right two days old data two days old day okay now again tuesday came now tuesday will become day 1 okay tuesday will become day 1 monday will become day 2 and sunday day 3 now wednesday wednesday will become day 1 tuesday day 2 monday day 3 and sunday day 4 in this way assume that thursday also spent and now we are in friday okay friday friday will become day 1 thursday day 2 then wednesday will become day 3 tuesday day 4 monday day 5 so assume that monday it ran from 6 to 10 now what will happen right on friday on friday it will keep bills up to 
means it will keep up to 6. 1 to 5, it will delete because Sunday becomes 6. So, what we are giving here? We are saying keep only bills that are triggered last 5 days. Means here, last 5 days will become Monday because today is Friday. Last 5 days are, last 5th day will become Monday. Sunday will become 6th day. So, we are saying delete those. So, what it will do automatically? It will delete first to 5 bits. Next, if Saturday comes, then it will delete this also. It will delete first 10 bits. From 6th to 10th, it will delete on when? Saturday. Okay, you got it right. In this way, it will work. I am just saving 5. If you come here, okay. Instead of 5, you will give much more. Okay. We will say, is there any job run on FIB? No, every is running on. Okay. FIB it run. So, we will consider from March. So, March, April, May, June. So, 120 plus 5. We will give 125. Okay. Configure. So, from March, it should keep 125 days. Correct, right? 125 days means from March, it should keep and it it should delete the rest okay so i'm just keeping 125 save just see from 3 it has so it has to delete 10 up to 10 it has to delete automatically okay we need to run a job so i'm just running this so 33 is completed did it deleted no so what we need to do just refresh this if you come down, see, deleted, right? Did we enter anything? Nothing. It deleted everything. Whatever days it will, after four or five days, what it will do? It will delete the rest. So, based on days means it will keep, if you give any number, it will keep only those days. Only it will keep the bills which were executed on those days. Before that, it will delete. This is the one way. We will see the second way. Second way means it will keep n number. Means if you give 10, it will keep latest 10 bills. It will keep the latest 10 bills and it will delete the rest. This is simple, right? Straight away. Only n bills. If you give 5, only 5 bills it will keep and it will delete the rest. We will see that. So here uh, I am saying I want to keep only 5 or I want to keep 10. Okay. Let us see. Okay. The same configure. I am just deleting this. I am just giving 10. Or I am just giving 15. I hope there are more than 15. From. Yeah. More than 15. Right. It started from around 10 or 12. Now it is 13. Okay. Now it is 33. So more than 10. So I'm what I'm doing, I need to keep 15. So just run this. So 35 will come and only up to 20 it will keep. Because 15, right, we have given. So up to 20, from 21 it has to keep and it has to delete the rest. Correct, right? Yeah. Okay, still pending. It got completed. If you see, it deleted, it, ke it kept only latest 15 jobs, latest 15 builds. The rest it got deleted. So, this how we can choose this number. We can choose both. Okay. Let us see how it will work. This will work as OR condition. Means, if Jenkins will say, both conditions. If any one of the condition is satisfied, then it will delete. Okay. I will explain that. See, I have not yet saved. See, okay, I am just applying this. Here, what I am saying? I am saying keep 15 bills. Okay. It is 15 bills. Okay. 15 bills condition is satisfied. Okay. Good. But Again, what I am saying, keep only 5 bills. Means, keep only uh, bills that are triggering 5 days. Means, how many it has to keep? 
last five days means only these three or these four correct right last five days how many bills got triggered only these four see days wise how many how many you are saying keep four but count wise how many you are saying 15 now jenkins will do both means it will check both conditions if both conditions satisfied then it will delete here this condition is not satisfied means it won't it is not like okay this condition is not satisfied so i won't delete no it will say okay you are given five days okay i will delete if you 15 then i also will delete here i am giving five you got it right according to this what we are seeing we have say we are saying that keep 15 bills but here we are saying keep only five days means five days means only this four then what jenkins will do it will keep only this because it is satisfying condition jenkins will check both conditions if any condition is satisfied then it will delete see it kept only this if you run again again it will keep again it will go for six okay like that it will keep if we give here if we give here only two okay here only two days how many we gave five means all this job has to keep right see days wise this condition is getting success means it will keep all this but bill number wise we are asking only to keep two correct now what jenkins will do it will delete definitely it will delete it will delete it will keep see what it will say right boss for days you are saying we we need to keep but i got one more instruction to say keep only two i will follow that also it's like no partiality i have to follow only your condition and only your condition whichever conditions i satisfied i will delete here which condition is satisfying keep only two so it will keep only two means if i run 38 it will delete the rest means it will keep only two 38 and 37 even though days wise it is satisfying the another condition is not satisfying so it will delete last example i'm just running this so once complete it will keep only 38 and 37 refresh it and see okay you got it right this is very important guys definitely this will helpful you thank you and if you have any still doubt let me know i will give much more examples because this is very important thank you hello welcome back in the last couple of classes we have been seen why we need to delete old and unused bills and how to delete them. how to delete we have two ways one is manually and automatically manually we just enter into the bill number and we choose delete automatically we use bill discord option again here we have two ways one is we can delete based on days and another one is we can delete based on the count of bill numbers both also we can choose but what will happen if you give certain condition jenkins will delete all the satisfied all the condition satisfied bill numbers there is no formality for jenkins if you give any condition it will delete all the bill numbers if any bill number is required then it is known for me see according to me particular bill number is required but jenkins doesn't know right got it right according to me i need a bill number and it should not be deleted by jenkins at any cost manually or automatically i know that but how jenkins know about that correct right how jenkins knows that that is a important bill number and i should not delete even though condition satisfied i should not delete that bill number how jenkins come no how jenkins will know that here is the question sometimes we should not delete the bill at any cost now the question is how to save bill number permanently means how we can tell jenkins jenkins please don't this don't delete this bill number please save this even though condition satisfies please don't delete this we need to tell to jenkins how we can tell that using this option keep this build forever 
using this option we will say jenkins please don't delete this one where we will see this option we will see inside the bill number okay if you mark any bill number like keep this bill forever then it won't it will not delete even though the condition in build discord satisfies manually also it won't delete last line if we keep any if we give this option to any build number then that build number will not be deleted manually or automatically we will see this we will go this one okay okay see uh first i will delete this manually okay I'm just selecting this i'm able to see right delete build number four yes yes i have deleted that. four is there no four is not there so manually is possible automatically we can we need to go to the configure and we need to choose build discord okay here okay build discord i am keeping five okay so 19 will come 19 18 17 16 15 so 15 it will keep you will see that bill now 19 okay just refresh this okay 15 is there. if i run again then 15 will delete it correct right it will keep only five okay okay if i refresh 15 will be deleted okay if i run it again what will happen 16 will delete but 16 is very important for me and it should not delete then what i need to do select this build number and select this option keep this build forever okay now come to here if you see this we got a locking system this indicates we mark this build as a important and jenkins should not delete this now jenkins come to know okay this is important according to this team this is important so i won't delete okay let us see now we mark this keep this build forever right let us see whether we have deletion option here do we have deletion option no see manually also deletion is not possible for this build number for 17 it is possible yes because we didn't mark it see delete option is there for 17 and it is not there for 16 if we run this again let us see what will happen let us see manually is not deleting automatically whether it will delete let us see that okay 21 came just refresh this see it got deleted no it won't delete let us run again 22 is in progress let us see that just refresh this it got deleted no and what number we gave we gave only five so five plus one you got it right it will keep five plus this one if we run again 18 will also be deleted you got it right this way we can protect or we can save our build number permanently thank you welcome back now let us see what is meant by job and how to create a job and what are the different types of jobs that are available in jenkins according to me jenkins is nothing without jobs means whatever we do in jenkins we will do with the help of jobs only like creating a job like cloning compiling building deployment creating artifacts uh, like uh, publishing email whatever whatever we will do in jenkins we will do with the help of jobs only there are different types of jobs available in jenkins there are different types like when we install jenkins right we will see hardly four to five okay those are come by default and definitely there will be much more example like maven project is there 
maven pro maven job type will not come by default we need to install a plugin got it right by default only few job types will come only few job types will come by default and if you want much more then we need to install a plugin you got it right we will see that now let us see how to create a job to create a job we need to select new item this is my one of the jenkins and this is another jenkins like in one in one server i install jenkins in my local also i install jenkins okay see these are two types of jenkins i have like jenkins is installed in two servers this is one and this is two let us see that now how to create a job we need to select new item so here how many are there how many job these are the job types like freestyle maven pipeline external etc like how many types are there one two three four five six seven eight here new item one two three four five six see here only six here eight are there it doesn't mean only eight we have much more got it right we have much more in the last class we have seen about what is the uh, use of jobs and what are the different types of jobs and how to create a job now let us see about freestyle job type this is the most common one and one of the default job type that we will get when we install jenkins means freestyle job type is the most commonly used and this is one of the default job type that we will get when we install jenkins by default we will do all this stuff like a job trigger parameter source code management like gate svn we can do anything we can do everything i can say but like for other configuration like maven uh, maven build and artifactory configuration we need to do like some more configuration we need to add much more configuration at that time like maven job type is the best one because by default it will they will give here they won't give like maven uh, maven related configuration will not come so we need to configure we need to configure everything you got it right freestyle for maven we need to configure everything but we have one more job type uh, like maven here by default they will give complete configuration that are required for maven so if you have maven project then this is seem little bit simple when compare with freestyle you got it right now let us see how we can create a freestyle project okay go to the dashboard okay go to the dashboard i'm just coming from scratch new item i can say freestyle okay i'm just selecting freestyle project just say okay most of our our examples right whatever we discuss here we will see the uh, freestyle only we can do everything guys like a build trigger build environment build post build actions everything is possible i'm just going to build and i'm just windows batch i'm just just saying hello this is freestyle job let us print this build now success see this is freestyle job this how we will create freestyle job like all our classes right almost 80 classes most of them are in freestyle so you will get much experience in this thank you in the last class we have seen about freestyle project 
Now let us see how we can create a pipeline project. Pipeline project is quite different when compared with the other projects like a Maven, Freestyle. Every other project is different when compared with the pipeline. Other, other project types, right? We will do our requirement with the help of configuration. Like if I want a uh, parameterized, then what I will select? I will select the parameters. Uh, this project is parameterized. After that, I will select my parameters. But here, everything I need to write with the help of code. Okay. This is the syntax. We will see how we can create a pipeline project. Same. Every project creation or every job creation will be the same process. We need to select new item. We need to select new item. Here, I'm just saying pipeline project. I'm just saying pipeline project. See, we should not select freestyle. What option we need to select? We need to select this one. Which option I need to select? I need to select pipeline. Say okay. Okay. Now, where I need to give everything? I need to be in the pipeline. See, if you create another job, right? I will show you. See, I'm creating a freestyle job. I'm just saying example freestyle. See here oh, how many options are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Total eight sections are there, but here only five. One, two, three, four, five. The rest we can we need to configure with the help of code. Got it right? This is the example on how to create a pipeline. I'm just copying this code. Okay, just testing, save and run. Okay, this got completed. This how how we create pipeline project. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Now let us see how we can create a job which is similar to another job. Like first of all, why I need to create example. Assume that I have a job where I have some tense or some huge configuration. Like assume that in one of my job, right, I created five to ten parameters and uh, source code management. I have given the Git URL and branches some rules i have given trigger i have given some setup and in build step right i i written almost 30 to 40 lines and post build actions i configured artifacts everything is there i want to create similar job the only change in the new job is the git url except git url the remaining all configurations are same how i can do that okay new item like a dash what is this choice parameter right choice parameter one okay it's a freestyle okay what i need to do sorry this is not the one right what i need to do this project is parameterized. Okay, I need to select this. Where is that option? This project is parameterized. Okay, what is the parameter name? This one. Copy here. Okay, this project is parameterized. What is up this one? Choice parameter. Okay. Do you really think that this is possible? How much time I need? Definitely, right? How much time I need? See, this is simple configuration when compared with the real time. Real time, you will have much more. So, this is not possible. For this, right, we have one option that what we are going to discussing now. If you need to create a job with almost same configuration of another job, in this case, 
we will save that time so in this now let us see how we can do that go to the dashboard new item create a job name choice parameter here what we will do we will choose two two but here instead of selecting the freestyle or pipeline what we need to do we need to come here see copy from from where i need to copy the configuration choice if you type it will pop up i need the same configuration from choice parameter just select okay see now where are we we are in choice parameter 2 if you come here everything will come everything which are related to that uh, job it will come here my requirement is i want to change only this that's it i will change this that's it rest everything will come by default see how much time i save certainly i can say some hours we can save this got it right how to create or how to create a job which is similar to the another job thank you our next question is what is the use of throttle most of the jenkins users might heard about this if not then we will see what is this throttle enforce a minimum time between builds or in another word what we can say it is a time interval between two builds of a job assume that i have a job like my health button I ran, I, I click 10 times in a minute. What it will do? It will run 10 times. In a minute, I click uh, build now 10 times. What it will do? It will run for 10 times. But it should not be happen. Okay? I can control this. How I can control this? By using these two options. The first one I can give is example as 2. And I can give minute. Means in a minute, here minute we can give hour or second or day anything we can give and here two means in a minute how many bills it true it should run only two even though if i click 10 times it should not trigger 10 it should trigger only two okay now my question is when these two bills will trigger example first bill i run at 10 10 o'clock first minute and first second and second bill I triggered at 10 o'clock, first minute, second second. And within two seconds, I triggered two bits. Whether it will take? No, it won't take. Second bill will not start at 0 0.2 seconds. Why? Because two, only two bills at in a minute, right? Then it has to start. No. Throttle will not work in that way. How it will work? How many bills you gave? Two. Time period, minute, one minute. So, it will take the average. So, minute means 60 seconds. 60 seconds by 2, 30 seconds. So, if first, first build, if it takes at 10, 1, then second build will take at 10, 30 seconds. 10, first minute, 30 seconds. You got it right. Immediately, it won't start at 10, 2. What it will do? It will take an average. Average is 30. If you give 3, then it will take average as 20 seconds. You got it right? You will see the same in the example. First, I will see whether we have any uh, builds, configure steps, nothing. Okay. Here, in Office 365, we will see that option. Okay. If you see, total builds. Okay before that let me start this jobs okay build now 13 build now because I am clicking regularly so it will take the bills 15 it see it, it is increasing right 16 also completed again I click within a minute I, I triggered five to six jobs but it should not happen so what I'm doing, I'm click on configure and go to Office 365 here. Total. 
here what I am doing? I am giving two builds in a minute. See, we have different option guys. Second, minute, hour. We can choose any one. I'm just saving this. Now see. Build now. Yes, it executes. Now what will happen if I do again? See, if you see this option, pending, it not started immediately. What it is saying? Build throttle expires at so and so time. So after this time only, by default, it will start the new build called 19. Got it right? It is a 30 second time interval. If you give 3, then how many intervals it, how many seconds it will take? 60 by 3, 20. So after 20 seconds only, it will start. You got it right? The time got completed. Now it ran the 19th one. You got it right? Thank you. Now let us see how to add a time to the console output. And what are the advantage of adding time? Okay. Before that, we will come to any job. Okay. Here, go to the console output. Here, if you see this, we are not sure like when this step got started and when this step got completed because there is no any time indication. But now, my requirement is I need to add time to each and every step so that what are the advantages of that with this we will come to know when the build is started and we can also know like when how much time it is taking to complete each step when it is got completed etc all this information i can capture easily but how to do that we need to add option called add timestamp okay where this will be in this will be in build environment step and what is that option called add timestamp okay and this will not applicable to the completed jobs this will applicable only to the upcoming build numbers okay go to the configure okay and what where we will see this in the build environment Okay, build environment. And what is that option? Add timestamp to the console output. If you see here, add timestamp to the console output. Now let us see what this will do. Save this. And build now. Okay, come here, console output. If you see here, the time got started. What's the time now? It's 7, 33 and 54 second. All this started in a second. Okay. Now, once it got completed, at the time also, it will fetch. See, this is very simple, right? We're just printing echo. But in real time, it will be few steps, like Maven steps will be there, shell commands would be there. At that time, you will come to know when it got started and when it got updated. See here, up to here, it's 7 hours, 33 minutes, 54 seconds. But after that, it got changed. It, it, it took more than 30 seconds. Okay. This is the advantage of adding a timestamp. Thank you. Our next question is, explain about weather report icons that appear for bills on Jenkins page. Means these icons. By these, we can say the build status. How? If last five build got success, means this report, this weather report depends upon the last five build status. If all five builds got success, then it will be full sunny stage. Only four got success, means out of five, only four builds got success and one is failure. Assume that one build is failure. Then sun will be there and little bit cloud will be there. Only three got success. Then sun will disappear and we can see only cloud. Only two got success. Then it is like start raining, like raindrop, only one raindrop. And only one build got success or none of the build got success out of five. Then it would be like heavy rain model. 
okay these are the five icons we can see on the page only these five icons we can see if you see here means this means all lost five bills are failure or four or five bills got failure out of five see all five bills got success this also lost four or five bill got failure okay now we will make this build failure okay we will see what icon it will come as of now it is full sunny because all lost five bills got success if you see all lost five bills got success okay we will make this build as failure see for making build success is very uh, difficult but to make failure is very simple right so we will do that okay this is a wrong icon this is a wrong command so definitely the bill will get failed you just observe that the icon is full sunny okay now make a build the build is failed right now see what what icon this will be see it got changed right the sun is there and little bit cloud now we will run it again and meanwhile i will remove this image the last two bills got failed now the icon will become cloud because last three bills got success and two got failed because of this we have this icon if last three bills got failure then light raindrop will be there single raindrop will be there correct right so yeah completed just refresh this the icon will get change and lost four or lost five got failure then the heavy rain symbol will come if you see this yes i am making one more build fail whether this will change no because lost four failure or lost five failure the icon will be same now if the build is getting success again then the icon will change accordingly i will just make two builds to run okay just just remove this now what will happen the build will get success okay now whether the icon will change no because see four failures or five failures the icon is same okay because here four failures are there out of five so the icon is remaining same if it make again success then the icon is will change the bills are failure out of five means two got success then if the two bills got success then what is the icon it is this one now let us see whether the icon is changed or not yes if you see the icon is changed if next build is success again this icon will get changed so this way the weather report represents the stability of your builds based upon last five builds